This episode is brought to you by BioCell RX. BioCell RX is an amazing company that makes some of the best CBD I have ever tried. I've been personally using this product for over three months, and it does not disappoint. I don't go anywhere without it. When traveling, it's really hard to get to sleep, especially when I'm swapping time zones and going to different places, sleeping in hotels and not in my own bed. CBD helps me get a good night rest so that I can wake up feeling refreshed, ready to coach, ready to teach, or ready to compete. Whatever it is, I take my CBD with me. My CBD is my partner in crime, my partner in travel. BioCell is one of the products that, if it's not in my backpack, I'm not leaving the house. You guys are definitely going to want to head over to BioCellRx.com and pick up a bottle of your own. The cool thing about BioCell is they offer CBD at an incredibly highly concentrated formula. With over 6,000 milligrams per bottle, you can get one bottle and hold on to it for a long time. The typical dose for CBD is around 30 milligrams, so you do the math. Uh, one bottle will last you a very long time. You don't have to deal with constantly ordering new products and you know waiting for it to arrive and maybe running out, all of the nonsense. Use code PLAYTHEGAME and get $25 off at checkout. All right, everybody. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode is brought to you by HK Army. The tournament season is right around the corner, and there's a ton of teams out there who still haven't finalized their 2023 gear sponsorships. Well, look no further, PTG fam. HK Army is offering team sponsorships along with custom-designed team jerseys, pants, dry fits, gloves, and more. Get your squad in matching gear head to toe from HK Army and be sure to let them know that PTG Podcast sent you. To get your team sponsored, simply email teams at hkarmy.com and ask for the HK Army Sponsorship Program. That's teams, T-E-A-M-S, at hkarmy.com to kick off the 2023 season in style with HK Army. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by the one and only Trans Labs that brought the world two amazing products. First off, Transfuse, which is a hydration multiplier, and most recently they just dropped Transcend, which is a nootropic energy formula. No matter what you use when you choose Trans Labs, you are going to be boosted and you are going to be ready to charge the paintball field and win out there. With Transfuse, that is a premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula scientifically designed to replace replenish you at the cellular level and they use all natural ingredients in this product. We've got zinc, we've got vitamin B6, we've got vitamin C, sodium, potassium, choline and it is an amazing way to make sure that you're hydrated and prepared to play top level paintball. When it comes to Transcend, that is a premium nootropic energy formula designed to increase cognitive performance, elevate mood and clarity while supporting long-term brain health and it's going to leave you feeling great with no crash or jitters. It's one of the only products in the nootropic space backed by research studies to ensure the formula is correct for optimal performance. It is more potent than anything on the market, and it will keep you charged and ready to win out there. I take one scoop, but if you're stimulant sensitive, take a half scoop, and if you want that LFG dose to launch to the moon, dump two scoops in your drink, and you are going to be flying down that paintball field. Comes in two delicious flavors, Baja Blast and Skittles Candy for the trans send and for the transfuse they have two new flavors as well pineapple express and hawaiian punched so if you get a chance head over to translabs.com that's t r a n z l a b s.com use code play the game and you'll get 10% off if you subscribe to a monthly delivery service you also get 10% off as well so you could take advantage of 20% off on these products 
head over to translabs.com and give it a go. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We got a lot of news dropping. Harrison Fry just joined the team. Aaron Scott is taking over as one of the WNXL's newest franchise team owners. And we have the PTG Fantasy Football Champion on the show. A lot of action, a lot of juice, a lot of fun stuff. So without further ado, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. Though. Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. PTG Nation, we got another banger. Woo! It's episode number 178. Let's go, Marchie. How you doing, boy? 178, dude. We're getting closer to that 200 mark. Let's go. Towards it. Yeah, yeah 100%. I'm good, Ty. I'm good, man. How about you? Doing really well. Doing well. Just uh, got home from the park. I was doing some uh, off-the-leash training. Shout out to Patty Gleason. Had nice. the kids out there. My kids are starting soccer. They actually just started this week. Theo had some practice yesterday. Max is doing some practice later in the week. And so they were doing some sprints with me out there, uh, you know, running around and kicking the ball around and having some fun. I love it, dude. You taking your transcend up there uh, when you, you go out know. to get, get these workouts at the park or what, boy? Let's go. <laughs> Let's <laughs> Even my go. kids, I can't keep transfuse in the cabinets because everyone in my house drinks it all before I get any. <laughs> yeah straight up dude uh steven yeah. is sending us some some new packets i'm so excited um yep. i've been i've actually been out of the hydration stuff i got the transcend but uh i've been out of the the hydration formula the transfuse so definitely need to get yes. that back on the regiment especially as you know event one is a little over a month away so the training mm -hmm. is really ramped up um i know i know you're putting in work um i've Always. been working my butt off been in the sauna a bunch um which is just like it makes dude the sauna Whew, you really got to be on your hydration game if you're working out <laughs> and sitting in the sauna. Oh my God. So transfuse is a is a you know life. Dude, it's a staple. It's an absolute staple. It's a staple. Uh, if you're not using it, you really are shortcutting yourself on uh getting the most bang for your buck on that paintball field. Mm -hmm. And if you want to try it out, use code play the game. It's really the flavors, the effect that you feel from taking it is top notch. And we're super grateful for Steven. The whole crew over there, uh, trans yes. labs and everything that they do have been crushing it. Yeah. So to be clear, the transfuse is the hydration formula and the transcend is a like pre-workout nootropic. Um, it doesn't make you jittery. It's not one of those, you know, heavy stimulant based uh, nootropics or, or, or pre-workouts, I should say. Um, just makes mm -hmm. you feel like dynamite, right? You feel amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. It's so good for working out. Uh, you feel like you're getting a great pump. So that has been a game changer. I'm so excited for the future products that they have coming out too. Uh, Steven is definitely uh, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes right now to bring the paintball community and everybody just a fantastic line of uh, health and wellness stuff. So yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely stoked on that. Yep. We got the first NXL event of 2023 is going to be happening, like you said, in a little over a month out in Florida. So we can't wait to see everybody soon out there. And uh, we're really excited to see how all these teams are going to perform with the big moves that have happened in the last three weeks. And we just saw some more. You know, uh, it has Woo! not stopped. It's, it's still going, it as stopped. you know. It's still going. <laughs> It's still going. Yes, we just picked up Harrison Fry. We are going to have him on the show. We got a great episode for you guys tonight. Uh, we do have one of the Discord GOAT members, the champion of the Fantasy Football League, the PTG Fantasy yeah. Football League. Uh, go. We're going to have him on the show here in a couple minutes. Then we have one of the co-owners of a WNXL franchise on shortly after. Shout out to Aaron. And uh, then Harrison yeah. Fry is going to be gracing us with his presence towards the end of the show. Um, so... Fry yeah, dog. we uh, we got a lot to talk about, man. Yeah, Dynasty just picked up Harrison Fry. I think it's a great addition. You know, we lost two players, uh, Dalton and Kyle. Um, and so you got to pick up two players, right? Um, very excited mm -hmm. to uh, to have the new players. Chris is obviously, he's been on the show a few times now, and, and Chris is just an awesome dude. And uh, Harrison, I think we're really going to see him kind of unlock another level this year. You know, uh, I, both of them, really, I don't think, you know, they, they haven't had – this type of experience behind them. So, you know, for some young players that have really made a splash on their own, I'm, I'm excited to, to get to work with them. Yeah. They're both extremely talented players as everybody knows. And Fry has been chomping at the bit for a long time 
to yes you, like you said he's never been a part of one of those really well orchestrated you know and infamous is well orchestrated don't get me wrong but the amount of years of experience with the orchestration that dynasty has is something that he's never seen before you know there's there's just so much talent in the organization and same with infamous but the pedigree that the four horsemen have uh with titles and everything that they've put on the board there's a certain element of winning that has to be learned and it's an extremely difficult finicky process to learn and when you have that kind of leadership around you as a player like harrison's gonna see you know it definitely streamlines being able to learn how to win and uh it's something that some players never learn how to do you know some players never win a pro tournament and i would have to say yeah, that crazy, that man. most pro players actually don't win a pro tournament it's a pretty tight-knit group of players that win tournaments so to be mm -hmm. able to step into dynasty camp and get that type of wherewithal, it's going to be huge for his career. Yeah, I could not agree with you more. Um, I'm very excited to work with him and, uh, and, and get the process started, see what he could do. Um, yeah. All right, Ty, we're going we're gonna to call in our boy over here, PTG Easy. Goat Life. Let's see. Easy. Yeah, he's the uh, OG Goat. He just won the 2022 Ooh. fantasy football lead oh that we have okay he's on he's Ooh. on video here so i guess we'll do uh Yo, we'll, we'll, go. we'll go spick hey. and span style <laughs> what up brother cypress kings uh, yeah what's, cypress going on, kings. Fellas? what's up there dude go. good to see you yeah, good brother. to see you guys as well man good to see you guys as well it's awesome to be on i really appreciate it man it was a really fun league hey you yeah, know dude, when so we make a promise we make a promise. We stand by it here at PTG. You know, we said we promised we're going to bring you on the show if you win the fantasy football in the Discord, which uh, you got to tell the people what's popping in the Discord. It's a really fun time in there, but we made the promise come to reality. Nice, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, the, the GOAT squad is great, man. Those meetings are off the chain. We have a good time. So much giveaways, so much good vibes in there. People giving great advice. You guys always hanging out, man. It's awesome. It's a great time. Yeah, real quick, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, let the listeners know, you know, where you're from, uh, how long you've been playing, uh, your, your kind of role in the, in the PTG community, and, and uh, yeah. the, the accolade you just received. Nice, yes. So, um, my name is Alec Norsworthy. I'm from South Carolina. I play for the Cypress Kings. There we go. Let's go. There we go. Um, yeah. We play uh, D4 X-Ball at CPXL. Um, I've been playing paintball. I went to my first scenario like 10 years ago with my dad um i'm 29 and then uh i started playing competitively for the past about two years um played d5 last year we did pretty good i think we came in second for the series um go. gonna play d4 this year and and ready to go man and yeah in the goat squad man i've been in there for i think about eight or nine months and um yeah just being in there listening to you guys definitely took my game to the next level man i love it yeah, that's that's amazing, dude. Glad to hear. Um, Tyler and I have really enjoyed uh, growing with the goat community, and we see a lot of you guys out at the field. Actually, Maggie was just out at the paintball mm -hmm. combine. Hey, real quick, I, I didn't realize that you wanted to do video. If you want, you could send me your email address, and you could hop in the video really quick. Um, we've got about. Oh man. Yeah, definitely. We can okay. definitely do that. Let me yeah. Uh, send it. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Let's do that. Hey, I'll get you here forget. on the video, so I'm not. Yeah. You got to bring the ring. You got the ring. You got to show I've got off the, the ring. I've got the ring. I've got the ring. Okay. I've got the ring. <laughs> He's got the ring. He's got the ring. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. I'll send you an email Bye. and hop in here quick. Cause we got about 10 minutes until our, until our next guest on this one. So give us, give me All a right, sec Perfect. Here. I got you. Yep. 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 All right. There we go. That's what it's all about. Okay. We make dreams come yeah. true on PTG. <laughs> and shout out to yeah, the Cypress. I feel bad. I didn't King. realize. I didn't realize he was ready to go with the uh, with the camera. Look at him; he was ready. The PTG He's ready. He had the is shirt. Ready, dude. They're Check all out ready. the YouTube. Check out the YouTube. Alex. He had the Cypress King shirt on, letting the letting right. the PTG Nation know. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, all right. He should be in here any second. But yeah, dude, these rings are so sick. Ty, I have yours. I, yeah. I, I have yours coming too. Don't worry. Oh, you're going to bring a tear to my eye, dude. I, I've been waiting on that since 2021. Let's go. I know, dude. You won last year fair and square. You deserve this ring. 
I, uh, I got I second it, place this season. Up, I promise. Uh, I know. And we, we could talk to him about this because you know, this, <laughs> yo, I don't know. You I'm know, proud of him. I'm know. proud of him. I will say I'm that I did have Joe yeah, Burrow. Right. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Burrow. Yeah, I did yeah, have yeah. Mr. Joe cool. And, wait, wait until uh, he comes on. I want you guys to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. We'll yeah. dive into it. But <laughs> honestly, I'm just, uh, I'm stoked to be a part of it. You know, there's, there's no big money on the line or anything like that. So I was happy to, to make sure that we bless the PTG fam. I mean, there might not be big money on the line, but this championship ring is big. Look money. at he, it. Are you Look at it? Let's see. <laughs> Can you guys hear Here me? Here we go. Yeah, we can we got hear you, you, but we Dude, don't got video now. It's, it's something's going on with the browser, man. It's not letting me access the uh, video every time I oh. click. He's gone. Oh. You got to let He's him know. You got to use, uh, yeah, Google Chrome. So if you want to hop into PTG World, you got to be on that Google Chrome. But yeah, the uh, the I, rings. I botched this. I botched this. I totally. <laughs> I forgot. I obviously <laughs> didn't tell him to do uh, Google Chrome because I didn't think it was going to be video. I thought he was just going to be on the on the phone. Uh, All gravy, God, Marcelo. You're blowing it. All gravy. So, are we going to get his video back up on uh, your phone here? Yeah, I guess that's the move. Yeah, we'll bring We're him in like that. that. But We're if you win, uh, and right now we have like a lottery going for the access to even be a part of the PTG um, fantasy football for the upcoming season, because so many people want to play now, you know, they're seeing so, how much fun we're having. Ty, you know what I think would be super dope. Um, I forget if we've talked about this or if it was just an idea that was, that I was talking about with myself. <laughs> hey, so dude, I, I I'm sorry. We're just going to do it this way. Here you go. We got it right. back on. I forgot. I there we go. Yeah. Yeah, you like you need Google Chrome. I didn't think you were gonna be on video, so I just uh, you know we were gonna do just the call in. But yeah, we're showing off the ring. This is this is fantastic. Hold on, have you seen the ring? Have you seen it? Yeah, of course you've seen it. No, I haven't seen the ring, man. Oh what? All right, yes, there it is. let's go, <laughs> bro. Yes, that is awesome, man. Look at that. That is so sick. So that is amazing. Yeah, it was a really fun year. Um, I was uh, kind of mid-level the whole season. Me and Marcelo were talking about some trades. He wanted my boy Kel. I Dude, couldn't let him go though. Real quick, um, let's talk about. Hey, real quick, let's talk about that trade that I I was uh, wanting to do. Um, let's see. There we go. Uh, because I, I just went back and looked at it when I was looking through our Discord conversation. I was yeah. we were gonna trade uh, Ertz, Zach Ertz, and Kamara for Travis Kelsey <laughs> and Brees Hall. But it's so funny right. we, we would have had two like big injuries on that. Yeah, yeah, completely different different teams, and that would have that would have changed everything as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, so next year, what we're thinking of doing is, or or Ty, let me know what you think of this. I would love if we had two leagues and we did like a champions and challengers kind of thing, where the other wow. league, like the top person, gets promoted to the main league, where we have like the championship rings, and you know, it's like you and I are in that league and then the bottom person from our league gets, gets relegated. Okay. <laughs> Dude, love I think that would be a sick thing to do. Cause so many people want to play. We don't have enough spots, right? Like I don't yeah. want to do more yeah, than 12 man. teams. A lot of people want to play. I think it'd be a cool mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. yeah. So many people in the discord chat were asking about it this year after we got done and we're talking about it. Um, in the main chat, there is at least, you know, a dozen people more than that, you know, asking, asking to get in. So you're going to have to do two leagues for sure. Yeah. Demand like is that. high. Demand is high for PTG fantasy the football. Demand is high, man. I'm crazy <laughs> for it. Yep. And the ring, dude, we, we spared no expense uh, on making sure that uh, you had a dope ring that you can rock for the win. Let's go. Let's go, man. And I'll be wearing it um, to Sunshine, Sunshine State um, coming, up, coming up here soon, too. I'll, I'll see you guys out there. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Heck, yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about that championship game. Oh, man. Oh, man. Crazy. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So, I'll lay it out for you. I've told this story, you know, to some of my paintball buddies before. So, basically, uh, coming into it, um, you know, me and Tyler were pretty even. I think both projected like 129, 129 points, literally. And then yeah. uh, it all came down to Monday night. He had Joe Burrow left, and I had uh, Devin Singletary. And mm -hmm. liter And I was up by, I think, nine points. But, you know, he's got Burrow. He's got Burrow. And then, you know, I think the first drive, Singles um, threw a lot. So Joe Burrow had eight points. 
And then, um, you know, everything happened uh, with, with uh, DeMar Hamill, Hamill, Hamlin, is that? Hamlin, yep. Yeah. You know, very tragic and that, that, you know, precedes everything else for sure. Um, but then basically, yeah, so we were pretty much tied and then uh, we nobody knew what to do. And uh, Stevie ultimately made made the ruling that we were going to treat it as injuries. And um, yeah. at that point, I, you know, I was up, but it was close. And I think if the game played out, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd, I'd put my money on Tyler. I'll just say that. But uh, I wasn't out of it. It was close, dude. And, and I'm just glad um, that Hamlin's okay. You know, he pulled through. And uh, yeah. that was a really tragic moment an unprecedented moment we had never seen anything like that in the national football league in i mean 20 years or or more you know um so thankfully he was okay you came out with the dub super happy for you and stoked yeah, that uh you get to rock that ring i can't wait to see you give that man his flowers let's go let's clap let's it up go. and uh i can't let's wait see to it. see you out in florida rocking the ring if you see my man's out there with the ring in Florida. You got to snag a pick. The champ is here. The uh, the PTG fantasy champ is in the house. <laughs> the we can't wait oh, yeah. <laughs> for 2023. Thanks, guys. It's going to be lit. Can I do a really quick plug? Really quick plug. I'm a real estate agent here in Charleston, South Carolina. Nice. Um, if you need any help with that, give me a shout. Love to help you out. Fund my paintball yes, career. Yes, sir. Ooh, yes. awesome. Let them, know, let them know where they can find you. Is there a website that you can plug right now for them as well? Yeah, so I actually um, have have my own website here. It's elliknorsworthy re um, dot com, uh, which I know is a mouthful, so I just kind of put that there. Um, also, my Instagram is the good life, um, t h e e good life. There we go. Yeah, if you need real estate yeah, help, awesome. Let my man's uh, make the deal happen for you. He'll get it done proper. And uh, we can't wait for the next season of fantasy football, man. It's going to be really fun. And we can't wait to see you in there. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you do in the PTG Discord and in paintball in general, man. We appreciate you. No, thank you guys so much, man. You guys have really changed my game for, for the better so much. And, um, you know, can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate it, man. Great show. And uh, we'll see you next time. Awesome, brother. Let's go, baby. Thank you. All love. I like how a good one. Oh, oh, he's out. Oh boy, he hung up. He hung up like that. He hung up like that. <laughs> and um, oh boy, it showed his phone number. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, well, hey, what it is. that should only yeah. help his real estate uh, sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Hopefully, it's his business line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It was so much fun. <laughs> and uh, it came down to the wire. You know, it was a yeah, really dude, 100%. Season. It's crazy. 100%. Oh gosh. And Steve sent, so oh, that's so funny. Stevie was texting me during that as well. And, uh, I think a photo popped up of the new flow shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiny oh, though. People would uh, really have to do tiny. some work. Hey, look, you know what? Tease You're getting, em. uh, yes, the tease, by the way, Steve, <laughs> they look amazing. Wow. Nice. Um, the new flow stuff is unbelievable. This is pfft, amazing. Yeah, he's crushing. Yeah, and he's gonna Absolutely have uh, he's gonna have some shirts at the first event. That's what he's shooting for. So he does he does he like nomad drops is what he's calling them, where he's like a nomad on the run, you know, running around in the wild, and he's got some shirts and some stuff for sale. If you want to hit him up, you can uh, find him in our Discord. You know, go to ptgpaintball.com, hit the orange link, become a member, and hop in there and chat with us and find Stevie, and he'll get you some flow Yay. merch. He's killing it. Yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. So, yeah, like, we got to talk is, about uh, before we pull in Aaron. You know, we got a couple okay. minutes here. We got to talk about yep uh, these moves to Revo, the Bears, Impact, and uh, we've got some action. We've got Vladimir Cozy Rev, who just went to Revo. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, big we move. did. I think that's yeah, that's a good move. Um, I'm just curious if. A lot of the Russians are like living in in the states right now. I'm very yep. curious on on the whole um, the whole situation. But yeah, seems like uh, Cozy Rev just went to uh, Revo, which is a good move for them. He's a really good versatile attacker. Um, I don't know that he's been playing a ton though, so I, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect from him. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't get a lot of play time when he was on the Russian Legion. Uh, I've always thought he had a lot of potential, you know. Um, he, he's had some very good moments for the Russians. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. I wonder if he's living in the States now and going to be able to practice with them a lot or if he's going to be flying over. Uh, I, I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, I guess we'll but have yeah, to see Yeah, that's a big that. move for them. It is. And do we have any word? Everything's all good. Russians are, are uh, obviously fielding a team. They've only lost that player from what I understand. And what happened with the news about Harrison? Is Harrison going to Russian Legion? I haven't seen that break. <laughs> yeah, I know. I haven't seen it break either. That's what I heard, though. Maybe this is just one big rumor that they got yeah. us all. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I've heard from a lot of people with like, you know, close to the situation that that's the case, though. So I don't know. It started. Yeah, it started from the pro paintball troll. You know, he, he started this rumor and it's just trickled through. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's the Lord um, of Trolls. So it, it's not out of the question. Lord. Troll. He's the Lord of Trolls. He's the Lord of Trolls. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. We've uh, Someone gave me a name of the paintball troll a couple weekends ago. Full name. No way. We got the name. But we're not going to break it. It's too much fun. And you know what? We actually want to have the paintball troll on. Blurred face, uh, voice distortion, the whole deal. Troll, if you want to hop on PTG, we would love to have you. We'll make sure that you stay anonymous and we can keep having fun. Yeah, totally. We brought this We brought this up a long time ago, um, and, and that still remains. We would not, you know, uh, reveal. We wouldn't even, honestly, I would want, I wouldn't want to, to know keep it. who it is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, so like, you know, it could be an anonymous email, paintball yes. troll at gmail.com. Pretty easy to set the up. Whole thing. You know, the, the whole thing, the whole thing. So, yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Um, <laughs> we'll but, see if we can uh, land that yeah, one man. for the PTG. We, we will see. We will, we will have to see. Um, and yeah, we have Erin Scott. She's a co-owner of Northern Lights paintball wnxl team that should be uh be here soon dude ty when we were at the paintball combine this last weekend which was amazing we had like over 30 participants that were eligible for u19 and u16 which is Damn. dynamite that shows that the youth is crushing and the youth is you know it's interesting i've seen i see one you know bit of information come from the, you know the higher ups that say youth paintball is dying and i've i've felt very weird about them saying that because I feel like it's been for an ulterior motive because they're like, well, now we're doing something for the youth. And that's their like punchline is that youth paintball, youth paintball is doing better than ever. And a lot of it is thanks to Anthony and Lori from BKI period. Um, it, they have done a tremendous job for the youth um, at world cup. Um, B Paxson and Thomas Taylor did it a tremendous job with like bringing out. So I don't, you went over there and mm -hmm. saw how, how many kids. Are. Absolutely. They had a whole and division. the Alley. Yeah. Alley remembered foundation did a, a amazing job as well. Totally. So to me, yeah. youth paintball is like better than I've seen it maybe ever. ever right. So I don't know That's where right. that narrative is coming from that youth paintball is like dying. I couldn't agree. I think I couldn't agree. More. Yeah. I think yeah. there's, there's, it's better than it's ever been. Uh, and there's some really great people, uh, assisting this again. Thomas was just on the show and he was talking about all the stuff he's doing. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know. Youth paintball is crushing. So we had we had about 30 participants that are uh, eligible for the Team USA U16 and U19 team, uh, which we will be hosting the tryouts. So a lot of them will be getting a call back uh, to come to the tryouts, which will be at the end of June in Boston. Um, and we're going to have our work cut out for us because it's you know, there's some good players. Evan Middleton was on the U16 team in Paris this last last uh, time around when we won. Kid is 13 years old. Tyler do you know who I'm talking about? Evan Middleton, you yes. know, little Evan, right? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, he is so good. It's unbelievable. I'm not kidding you in the tournament. He legitimately shot somebody off the break at least 90% of the time. And then their <laughs> team was down. a Their team was down a point uh, to go into Sunday or, or sorry, to go into the in, into overtime in the finals. They were down one point. He made this move through the middle and literally bunkered three people and hit the buzzer with like 20 seconds to go. It was crazy. So not only was he like shooting people off the stand, he was also it was send it. The kid is awesome. <laughs> anyway, we do have Aaron in the backstage in the studio right now. So we want to bring her in. Um, let's uh, let's do that. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, how's it going? This is pretty surreal. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> let's go, everybody. Welcome. Aaron yes. Scott, co-owner yes. of Northern Lights and spearheading a major movement for not only the WNXL, but for women across the world who want to play paintball as a whole. So thank you so much for being here. Let everybody know where you're tuning in from and, and how's your night going? 
Uh, it's going good. I'm just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I'm at work. I snuck away for a little bit. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> My Thank boss you. is probably like, what the heck are you doing in there? But <laughs> so, so what are you doing uh, for work these days? Uh, I work in films. I'm currently on a Disney TV show. So I work in set decoration. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. That's, That's awesome. awesome. It's good. It's, it's just uh, long days. Oh, for mm. sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can, but uh, what project, or you probably can't even say that, but what are you working on? <laughs> uh, I'll say it's based on a true story um, about a murder that happened on Vancouver oh, wow. Island. No way. Ooh. Wow. Mm. That's wild. That's yeah. really Disney cool. taking the dark path. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And we're starring uh, <laughs> somebody that's related to Elvis. That's pretty much all I can say. <laughs> Rad. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. And and how does that work? So I, I assume if you have like really long days, is it you, you probably, when you get a job, probably work a lot in a you know certain amount of time and then do you have a little bit of time off is that kind of how it goes until like the next project or is it back to back are you constantly working working like this it kind of depends film in uh, bc is really busy so for me i work in like episodic tv versus um like movies so you're like go 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 for 11 months then you have maybe three four weeks off and then go go wow. go but you just wow. get used to not sleeping <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, like a good uh, gig. It does yeah, it's good. I like being busy. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's tremendous. So, yeah. So let's talk about the WNXL. Um, I am so excited about, well, first of all, we were just at the paintball combine before we came on. I was going to mention, uh, we got to watch episode one of the new heroines documentary. And nice. I got to say, I got to say it is, it's the best paintball documentary that I've ever seen. I truly think it's like the, it's the, <laughs> They did such a good job of explaining like how the game is played and, mm -hmm. and having you buy into the story that I finally think it's something that we can learn from as far as how to showcase paintball to the masses, right? Um, I think so, I don't even think me. I, <laughs> it yeah, was giving totally. me goosebumps. I just watched like the oh, preview you saw it. and I was just the preview of it and I was okay. like, ah, even I want to watch it. Like I'm excited about it totally. and I'm excited to be a part of it. So I can only imagine, you know, people that play a little bit of recreational paintball, they're going to see it and be like, oh my God, I want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And you're in the film industry, so you know good quality work when you see it. And it looks like they really, you know, really doubled good. down on making that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited to watch it. Yeah, so, so what's your story? How did you get involved in paintball? How did uh, you come to be one of the owners of one of the WNXL franchises? I've been, it's been kind of a long haul for me. I've been playing for, since 2009 was kind of the first time, you know, classic birthday party situation. Uh, one nice. of my girlfriends, she's like, let's go out and play. And I went out there and I got absolutely murdered the first point. <laughs> and there's something about it, I was like, this is amazing. And yeah. it just that adrenaline rush, you know, and then the next weekend I was out, I had already bought myself. I think I had an A5 and it's just kind of progressed from there. The good old Titmans. That's what I started with as well. They're good. You know, it's unbreakable and I am yeah. definitely not tech savvy. So it was something that I could just kind of pick up every weekend. And that was all I had to do. <laughs> hey, shout out to the birthday parties. And uh, what was the field that you played at for the first time that field no longer exists it was called maple ridge paintball um but it was super a really good opportunity for me because i i mean i didn't know at the time that pro paintball was a thing or anything like that but there was a guy named aaron olson who was running the field and way back in the day he played for the naughty dogs hey. um and so he kind of just like saw potential in me i guess and i had started playing pump at the time and so he was the one that kind of gave me those first like fundamental skills like here's snap shooting you know here's running yeah. and gunning and i was like man i don't know what this guy's talking about but i'll try it out so he yeah. kind of gave me a really good base point well so. thank god for him and that's what we need at paintball parks all across the nation that's why mm -hmm. it's so important that we have our pro semi-pro just players that know how to play this game out there as ambassadors at the paintball parks helping nurture the future of the game taking players under their wing and teaching them, you know, if you see a player out at the field that maybe 
uh, you can give a little bit of advice to, give that advice. It's going to go such a far uh, distance in that player's career and just helping paintball grow as a whole. And I got to give love to the Naughty Dogs because I'm actually alumni of the old Naughty Dogs. Mm -hmm. Really? It was, it was one of the more fun teams that I've ever played for. We had uh, Mark Nelson, Map Chim, the Newth Brothers, um, Corey Fields. Yeah. And uh, we just had a bunch of fun on that team. We were out there shooting those Naughty Dog Shockers having some fun out there in the northwest <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's a good time anytime you can get out and play paintball that's what we're trying to do yeah on, and he was so great with like kind of you know i was a poor student i didn't have money so he was like you know what don't worry about field fees and you know when you play with a pump a bag of 500 paintballs is going to last you a couple weekends you know so he yeah. really kind of helped me get to that point where i was able to play consistently um, and then this random job opened up at one of the paintball companies in Canada, paintballgear.ca. And I was like, huh, I should apply for that. Why not? Right. Um, they needed a customer service person. And so I was like, I'm going to apply, see what happens. And I applied. And of course I was the only girl there. I was in a room with a bunch of big burly guys that are all kind of looking at me and I got the job. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And yeah, very nice. I do want to say, uh, playing starting as a pump player how did that help your game as you matured into paintball and obviously got into semi-auto and started playing that style i think honestly starting with pump is like a really good idea because it makes you focus you know your paint matters every shot matters so you really get that consistency and that accuracy you're not necessarily relying on firepower so then when mm -hmm. you go to an electronic marker where you have that firepower, you know, your shots yeah. are dead on. But when say, oh my God, it's been a long point, you start running low on paint, you don't really freak out. You're just like, Whew. you just kind of calm mm -hmm. down. You're like, I got this. I got 10 shots. There's only a maximum of five people out there. So that's like <laughs> two balls per person, right? So it kind of keeps you just kind of centered, I think. And you go back yeah. to those like core things that you learned. Of course. Do we have a dog in the room? If there oh, is, yeah. we have to meet the dog. <laughs> Just because that's to get my me favorite to part of the heard show. It, heard it. Yeah. There, there we go. Sorry. Hey, pup. That's Rip Ripley. Ripley. Welcome to PTG, uh, Believe bud. it or not. <laughs> Heck your yeah. ears popping up. <laughs> that's uh, one of my favorite aspects of doing these shows is we get to meet everyone's dogs or their animals, you know. Uh, typically, the animal will come strolling through and we get to meet the pets, which is awesome. I love that. I'm always the crazy dog lady. Like, let me see pictures of your pets. Yeah. <laughs> It's such a big part of our lives, right? Um, they're, they mean the world to us. Our pets are everything to us. And uh, it's yeah. another member of the family. So it's, it's always fun to meet everyone's family members, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to meet her. Ripley. She's a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So speaking of family members, that's much like a, a paintball team. So um, your guys' new team. Have you all been together for a long time or is this a newly formed organization and, and what was the process for picking players and yeah, can you kind of walk us through that? Honestly, it's kind of been a bit of a whirlwind. It was maybe a couple of weeks before COP last year and I got this message um, from B and she included some guy named Anthony. And she's like, hey, I really want to introduce the two of you. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, and then so Anthony messages me and he's like, hey, can you give me a call, you know, when you have time? And I was like, oh, I work in film, you know, I'll call you in like a week or whatever. <laughs> and so finally I called him and he introduced himself and I was, you know, kind of oblivious. I was like, who are you? Like, can you explain like what you do in paintball? You know, what part you have in the WNXL? And so he explained Anthony's like- the man, yeah. He's yeah, the man. Uh, yeah, he's the man. <laughs> he's totally the man. And so he kind of just like, talked to me about it and what they were looking for you know they're looking to add high caliber teams you know they don't want to just they don't want to just add teams for the sake of having more teams right in the in the league so they were looking for high caliber people he knew i'd been playing for over 10 years and so he's like do you think you could put something together and i was like oh yeah totally sure no problem and i got off the phone with him i was like okay now i gotta put together a team because all the teams I play on, I'm like the that. only woman, right? And so, you know, we do, luckily, we've had an influx of female players within the last two years locally. Um, and so I just started kind of putting out feelers, reaching out to them, had some interest. Um, and then I got really lucky. I reached out to Nikki Burnt, 
who her and I go like way back. You know, I've known her, I think since 2010, 2011. Um, and I was like, Hey, do you want to, you know, have a part in this? And she was like, yes, absolutely. Um, Amazing. And then I reached out to my friend, Lindsay, who she's a paintball photographer. I was like, hey, do you want a part of this? And she's like, yes, absolutely. Um, and then it was just kind of reaching out to those local players. And there's a couple of the girls that have been playing consistently the last two, three years that I know really well. So we have kind of a good core of four, you know, that we play a lot together. We know each other's playing styles. We know that everybody knows their job. Mm -hmm. um, and then this weekend we're doing tryouts. Nice. Um, so we have people flying from awesome. as far as Nova Scotia, which is, you know, East Coast. Um, mm. We even have a couple Americans coming. So we're kind of looking to fill those spots and just kind of see who gels with us. But I mean, I'm I'm happy playing with five for the first event. I'm greedy. I want to play every point. <laughs> um, but like ideally, it. we get maybe eight people. <laughs> yeah. Now you definitely need maybe just a reserve just in case, you know, maybe. at least six would probably six, be the safe six bet. Is, six is good. Seven, seven is a little better, but hey, yeah. you got to roll a five. You got to roll a five. <laughs> yeah. well, yes, you guys saw, uh, you, you saw a massive influx of uh, female participants two years ago. What do you, what do you think attributed to that? Do you have any, any ideas as why that happened? I think it was just, we had a bit of an uptick like in Canada and locally of people like starting to play more. I think maybe it was COVID people were looking for things that they could oh, do outside mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. wasn't shut down. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of guys that were coming out and playing and their girlfriends are like, Hey, you know, I'm stuck at home with COVID. There's nothing to do. So they started coming out more. Dude, so good point. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Two years ago was the first time ever locally I played it was me and four other women. I'd never played like, on an all women's lineup locally. So it was like, mm -hmm. you guys don't understand, you know, I've been alone for a long time. This is a big deal. And they're like, okay, cool. But I That's think they rad. just, they got the confidence, right? They see me out there. They see like somebody like Nikki that's playing internationally and they're like, why not? Yeah. yeah. And you have such a big buzz around the, the team right now. Everybody's really excited um, ah. and major love to the NXL, the ownership, everybody who's spearheading, making sure that the ladies have a supreme platform to play the game on and yeah. uh, and have fun. It's one of the most fun games in the world, and we love that there's so many women that are entering into the sport and having fun with this, and we have a whole league that's growing and flourishing, and it's all because of people like you, you know, that, that love this sport and are taking it on their shoulders to grow it, make those phone calls, and uh and put the feelers out to make sure that we can have this league be successful for many years to come yeah thanks for that yeah it's it's uh i feel honored that i was approached you know and then i have this opportunity to kind of be the first franchise based out of canada um bravo you know. give a round of applause <laughs> oh, yeah here we go <laughs> <Spend it. laughs> yeah. thank you it, and actually, it's incredibly important yeah, uh, ahead, it, it's incredibly important, honestly. The whole WNXL um, has been a huge boost to paintball. You know, women make up about half the population, right? And so having women play our sport is a very big part of our sport being able to grow. Um, and to be able to do it at a high level, I think, is so crucial. And you, you are starting to see some of the female players become kind of superstars, you know, and they're, they're – uh, role models for younger ladies you know younger girls which is you need that in sports like for me that's what always caught my attention in in sports was having somebody to look up to having somebody to learn from that you were like hey look they're doing that i could do it too right um and for a long time it was kind of uh not to say it was untapped because you can't you know overstate like early days of you know there was Keely Watson and obviously B has been just tremendous her entire career. You know, there's always been these players. Kat Sikora is one of the early female players that was really, you know, dominant and did a fantastic job of also um, being a professional. Um, but now you have a full league devoted towards it. And, you know, Tyler and myself, we've watched a lot of the games. There's there's some really good players in the league. There truly are. Um, and it's fantastic to see because. You know, it's a tough thing that you guys are doing as well because there's, you know, there's always going to be people that have negative things to say and they, you know, want to voice their opinion. Um, <laughs> but they don't they don't see the bigger picture and, and why this is so good for our sport. And we're in early phases. And I, I honestly just cannot wait to see, you know, where this goes. And um, again, like that documentary, I think, you know, it, it's 
probably just the first of many, but that might be what blows paintball up, you know, and everybody wants to, you know, have, you know, what their, their negative piece about, you know, should we have a female pro league and, or should we not? Um, initially my only conflict with it was that I do believe it's one of the few sports, maybe the only sports that the gun is the great equalizer. So there's no real advantage, you know, physically, um, in the sport. So do you want to separate it or should we just have, you know, some female superstars come in that can absolutely, uh, hang with the pros, the, 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 the male pros. Um, but the more thought that I put into it, I actually think it's very important to have the WNXL and then. Um, I am sure that there's going to be some players that that break through and are on the pro field with the men as well. Um, and, and that could be a very unique thing about our sport. I don't know. I, do you see it that way or or no? I think so. I think it's it's huge that women are being given this platform. I think it's still important that we still play, you know, with the guys as they're equal. But the WNXL is kind of giving us a platform because a lot of us, you know, like when I go to the field, yes. there's only a couple of me. So we're kind of pushed to the wayside. You know, if we go to a field and people don't mm -hmm. know us, they're not necessarily wanting to pick us up on their line to do scrims with, you know, so this is well, kind of BS. <laughs> yeah. get on the Until field. they get to know us. Right. Yeah. yeah um, totally. And like, you know, the thing is, is when I first started competing, I, um, I couldn't get on a team because people are like, who is this girl? I was the only girl. And so I kind of just said, screw it. And I put together my own team. And I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to run this. And my first tournament, I won it. And I kind of went from there. Um, and so I think no a way. lot of, yeah, awesome. and a, a lot of women, I think maybe, you know, I'm pretty stubborn. I don't get discouraged, but you, if you go to practice and people are just kind of like, ah, it's just a girl, you know, it's easy to be disheartened. So the WNXL can yeah. showcase us and showcase our talent yes. and kind of give people worldwide, you know, something to aspire to. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all better watch out. Erin Scott's on the scene and she's coming to dunk on you on the field. Okay. Uh, and that goes, I cannot wait to see the first female player stunting in the NXL because yeah. that's going to happen as well. You know, um, like Marchie was saying, paintball is just one of those special games where nothing matters. If you can ball, you get to play on, on any field. You know what I mean? And uh, it's going to be exciting because we are going to see that someday and we can't wait for that day. It's going to be a momentous day. And, you know, we're super proud of all the ladies out there who are playing paintball. And it's amazing because oh yeah, the um, – the fact that we haven't had more ladies playing paintball is mind boggling because of how special a paintball is in that regard. Right. Mm -hmm. And for us to see it blossoming now, you know, 2023 and beyond. And I know it started a, a couple of years ago, but I think that we are going to see an uproar of females that are going to start playing paintball as we move into the future, just because of uh, like, we got the documentary, we got the WNXL and so many women that are coming out of the woodwork to play paintball, which is amazing. It's what we need. It's huge. I love what you said. You know, paintball is that equalizer, right? Like I've always been athletic. Um, I've always been very competitive, but I'm small. I'm only five feet tall. So, you know, a lot Perfect. of these. Yeah. And, and in paintball, I was like, <laughs> hey, this is an asset, right? Like if I'm in Dorito, like good luck taking me out of there. If I don't want to move, you're not getting me out of there. Yeah. Um, and, and I just I Heard love that, that. <laughs> you know, and it, the eclectic group of people and different backgrounds that we collect it's pretty cool right you meet people it in paintball mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. wouldn't meet in your day-to-day -day life and they become your best friends absolutely yeah, yeah it's 100%. one of like uh maddie marshall he always talks about like the gifts of the game right there's so many different gifts that this game gives us and the relationships are truly the most important i know for me in particular and i know we can all attest to this all of the outstanding people within the organizations we've played for the teams that we play for right now outside of the teams the community there's nothing quite like the paintball tribe and you know all of us as human beings we need that in our lives and unfortunately you know there's a lot of people out there that don't have like a tribe and we're here to tell you that this is one of the best ones in the world and we love you and everyone is welcome to play paintball we want everyone on the field we want everyone to be having fun and enjoying themselves. Cause at the end of the day, you know, life is short. We got to enjoy each other. We got to enjoy this experience. And this game is truly spectacular in that regard of 
just making sure that, you know, when you go to those paintball fields, everyone's got your back. You know, of course, you're going to have trolls. You're going to have these people that, you know, they're going to be no matter anyway. what. Yeah, no matter yeah. what you do. But um, predominantly, they get they get weeded out because we don't need that in the sport. And there's so many good people that make sure that the energy is proper at the fields. And uh, if we can keep that moving forward, I don't see any reason why paintball isn't going to just keep doing what it's been doing and growing big time. Totally. I think it is. And yeah, like, you know, when I go to the paintball field, it's like, I know I have 50 big brothers that are there looking out for me. You know, I, yep. I met my husband through paintball. Um, wow. My wedding, half of the people that were at my wedding were paintball players, you know, and all our families are like, who are these guys? <laughs> but they, it's true. It's just you meet the most amazing people and you kind of you build that bond with each other. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, it's, yeah, there's nothing like it. What's your favorite paintball story? <sighs> my favorite paintball story. Well, my first tournament I went to play, like I said, you know, I was the only girl. So I showed up. Nobody knew who I was. Um, at the time, I think my husband was at cop. He was playing for impact P at PSP, you know, and I'm, I'm texting him like, Oh, it's my first D three tournament. I'm so excited. And he's like, way to go, babe. <laughs> you know, and I go to the field and they're like walking around and they're kind of, they're checking. Everybody has like their layers, you know, you don't have more than two layers and the refs are coming up they're grabbing everybody by the shirt and looking and checking how many layers. And I'm like, Oh, okay, whatever. So I'm just kind of standing there and you can't tell. I look like a little boy, right? With all my gear at the time, it was the big, big pants, big padded jerseys, right? <laughs> and this guy comes up to me and he looks, he's like, oh my God, you're a girl. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. And that whole, I, I think I was in touch with that whole tournament because that ref wouldn't even look at me. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get away with some things okay. as a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, yeah. live it up, you know? Yeah. And so live you got to shout out your hubby, right? Got to give him a shout out. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of our biggest supporters. You know, when I met him, it was when we worked at Paintball Gear Canada. And they're like, hey, we're hiring this, like, pro guy. And uh, he's going to be, like, the face of our company. And I was like, whatever. Like, that's not a thing, professional paintball playing, you know? And he came to work with us. And, of course, I'm the only girl in the company. And he, he, the dude didn't talk to me for, like, the first two days. And I was like, this guy's kind of a jerk. He's like, oh, I'm going to, I got to fly to California. I got practice with impact. And I was like, okay, cool. Like whatever. Um, and it turns out he was just really shy. You know, he didn't expect there to be a girl at the company. And he texted me. He's like, I'm really sorry. Like, I actually really like you. Um, and then it oh, just we kind of progressed I mean, from there. Right. Like yeah. he, he would take me out for drills and put me in the dirt. You know, he, he definitely didn't treat me any different and, I think I, That's I why you got good. Yeah, I got good because pain's a really good motivator, right? Like he straight up. He he taught me like all the skill set. You know, he, he taught me pick a job, be the best at that job, you know, be consistent. And yeah, so he's coming on as our coach and I think it's gonna be nice. pretty amazing. I, I think the girls don't quite know what they're in for. They're gonna find out this weekend at tryouts when we do drills day. Mm. Um, mm. but I'm excited to have him coming along you know, being it's along amazing. this journey. With awesome. Us. Yeah. So as, uh, as owner of one of the WNXL franchises, um, what do you, what do you see as the next steps for, uh, not just the WNXL, but even just the NXL to, um, kind of get paintball, um, accepted by the masses or, 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 you know, what's the next evolution for our game? I think we're on the right path, you know, kind of continuing what we're doing. Um, for example, the WNXL, it, you know, they they put out the stats of how many more people, women in particular, have been like interested in playing people have come out to rec ball. So, you know, just continue what we're doing. You know, I think, Marceau, you said it in one of the previous episodes, you know, like showing up to the field, you know, and it being clean, presentable, you know, a place that a mom would feel mm. comfortable coming and dropping her kid off. Not, not a bunch of like guys sitting there slamming beers, Absolutely. you know, smoking weed. Like <laughs> it has to be acceptable to the masses. Um, mm. And so just kind of standardizing that across the board, I think would go a long way. Right. Because a lot of parents are like, oh, I don't totally. know about this. Absolutely. I'm not going to leave my kid there. So totally. without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. yeah I mean, I and that's simple. It, it, right. It really is. It should be. We, we don't it have to complicate be. it. <laughs> it <Yeah>. should be. It should be. 
it should be. Yeah, some of the fields I've I've been to, I'm like, are you guys living in the Stone Age? I don't. Are you guys trying to make money? I'm just so confused. You know, it's not trying to knock them, but that definitely is not the presentation that we want as as a whole, right? No, um, it's, it's like you go to one of those like super. Or get murdered. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like one of those super grungy mixed martial arts studios where you're just like, mm, yeah, I'm probably, I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the one down the street uh, or maybe I'm just not going to go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Totally. I mean, yeah. if, as we all know, first presentation of something leaves a yes. lasting effect. So yes. mm -hmm. you got to yes. make sure that the second first someone. impressions are everything has that first impression they've got to feel good and and that's no different than any sport right it's like um pick a sport if if you were to show up and it's just just not run professionally there's shenanigans going on don't get me wrong shenanigans are fun but we got to keep it professional you know yeah. and uh, and make sure that it's uh something that we can pass on to the future generations we need to make this game worthy for the kids the kids that are coming up in the game, this game has to be worthy of them. So we got to make it presentable for mom, the youngsters. And then if you want to have fun, just don't do it in the front row, you know? Yeah, go back to your <laughs> truck. No, like, <laughs> and that's, yeah. you, you nailed it there. It's, you know, the sport. We got to bring those young people in. And yeah. who's mm -hmm. going to pay for them to play? Mom and dad. So how do we yes, make it absolutely. something that mom and dad are like mm -hmm. okay with? Because already they're going to be like, oh, my kid's getting shot at, right? So we have to make <laughs> everything else seem very appealing. <laughs> yeah. And thankfully, like statistically, paintball is one of the safest sports there is. Um, yeah. it's, it's far safer than traditional sports because there's no, you know, crazy contact that we see in a lot of the traditional sports. Uh, it's even safer than bowling. More people yeah. hurt their hands bowling than like going out and playing paintball. As long as you're safe, you keep your goggles on, you wear some protective mm -hmm. gear and, and, you know, um, definitely recommend a long sleeve and some pants. Um, but you know, it's, it is one of the safest sports that there is and you're going to have the best time of your life when you're running around out there. And that's the thing is, you know, I'm 12, 13 years in whatever that adrenaline rush for me has never yeah. gone away. You know, it's something that, you know, maybe I'll take a few months off here or there, but it's something that kind of always brings you back. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the most amazing thing. Yeah. And you started in around 2010. Is that right? I think 2009, 2010. And then I kind of okay. started competing in 2011. You know, I, I got to play kind of at the end of like the MPPL. So I got to play like nice. the Vegas when it was on the strip. I got to play HB when it was like on the beach, you know, which I'm Yo, iconic. so grateful for, right? Like kids <clears throat> yeah. don't know what they're missing nowadays. It was, it was mm, so I know. cool. One day we're going to have a tournament back on the beach uh just just like that we have to we have to there yeah. has to be to. another event 100 percent. like i would love if somebody would just do a one-off you know once every four years maybe you know do something you know i don't care it, it would be the most iconic kind of novel experience for mm -hmm. paintball players because huntington beaches growing up were like as a kid, you saw that if you went and played at one of those events or even just went to watch, you were hooked, you know, like that oh, yeah. was the coolest experience. You know, you have people from all around that have no idea what paintball is. They're walking along the beach and they, they see, we were like right next to the U S open one year, you know, it was the same weekend yeah. and, and so it's cool. like, it's crazy, you know? So you get all this crossover and it was just such a great thing for the sport. Um, people still mm -hmm. talk about it. So if somebody wants to take on that, that, uh, <laughs> role, it wouldn't compete with the NXL. It wouldn't, you know, it's not a, a, a competing type of thing. Make a one-off, you know, inaugural event, or again, you know, every other year or whatever it might be, I think it'd be an awesome, awesome, awesome thing for mm -hmm. the sport and amazing to film too. You know, I think that's like that whole, you know, being able to capture the fun of the game, you know, and, and the reasons that we have fallen in love with paintball. That's what I think we've done a, a poor job of to date, you know, go sports does a tremendous job of showcasing like the actual play itself, but everyone sitting here has fallen in love with the lifestyle of paintball. Like you already said, Aaron, the relationships, the experiences, uh, the travel and, and the type of travel, right? It's not always glamorous, but that's actually the best part of it as well. You know, like sometimes it's exhausting and just, you know, you're, you're kind of slumming it, but with, you're with your, some of your best friends and, and yeah. it just, it, it is paintball. Let's share that stuff. Like the stuff that made all of us fall in love with the game. If we could do a better job of showcasing that, 
uh, that's where I think we're going to get a lot of outside interest, the lifestyle. That's, that's what other mm-hmm. sports have done so well. That's what skateboarding did so well. You know, you wanted to be a skateboarder before you even ever bought a skateboard. You know, you yeah. just, you were like, oh, those people are, are cool or snowboarding, you know, all these kind of extreme sports, these, these kind of uh, niche sports. So, um, yeah, I would, I would absolutely love that. I'm in. I, and I think people yeah. would pay, right? Like I'm willing to pay <laughs> for extra sure. for, to go do that again. Like you, you're playing, yeah, you got the waves in the background, you got the really good totally. taco place across the road. Like, yep. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. are you gosh. talking about uh, Wahoos? I think so. Yeah. So w- good. Wahoos is the fish taco spot that is uh, across the street. And that Wahoos place is elite. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. good churros. Wahoos too. is elite. Oh, yeah. I actually, um, yeah. I... I won the last Huntington Beach event ever with Justin Schwartz. It was a two-man uh, tournament that HK Army threw on the beach, wow. and, and we won that. It was a lot of fun. Mm. And it was Mr. H's birthday, so it was shenanigans. It was madness. He was running around, having a bunch of fun, and uh, we had a great time out there. So hopefully someday we can get back out to the beach because it is one of the greatest sights in all yeah. of paintball. We're putting it out there. It's in the oh, universe yeah. now. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so how did your journey look rolling? You know, you started competitive in 2011 and you just pretty much haven't stopped all the way through. You've always played uh, up into present day. Yeah, I, um, you know, of course, I started playing seven man and then that went to like five man race two. And then I got into X ball, um, mostly played locally, just, you know, because it's expensive and especially coming from Canada, Mm -hmm. Our dollar is not worth as much as yours, guys. So mm. um, mostly playing the Vancouver Paintball League and then going down to uh, Doodlebug Sports, playing Ninja Ball. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just kind of progressed from there. I've continued playing. Um, last year, I hosted a league with somebody locally, you know, just trying to keep things rolling, keep people having places to play. Um, awesome. And here I am. <laughs> here you are. Awesome. Here I am. Yeah. I didn't that. expect it, honestly. I when I got that message from B, I was like, yeah, nothing's going to come of this, right? Like, <laughs> That's a who big am message. I? That's a big one from B. Yeah. I, I, you know, I've talked to her quite a lot throughout the years. We've kept in touch, you know, and she's always been kind of like, hey, you're going to come out. You're going to play with Destiny ever. And I've always been like, yeah, now, you know, whatever. I've always had my own thing going on. And now I'm like, well, you know, I'm getting older. I'm in my 30s. And, you know, this is something I can help form and kind of make, you know, my legacy and like leave something for women mm, in that. Canada. That is so awesome. cool. We love that. Yeah. And um, you got to shout out also the team that you came from before uh, joining with the Northern Lights. What was that team name? I still play with them. My boy is on the Vancouver Raiders. Um, so we play um, Ninja Ball and we also we have a new league that started last year, the BC X Ball League, which is also one of our sponsors for the Northern Lights. Um, yeah, those guys are my brothers. It's really cool because they're the guys when I first started playing that you would play against, you know, and you knew you were going to get put in the dirt, but they were like the guys you aspired to like yeah. be like, right? And now I'm playing with them and I'm playing with a bunch of guys that played with my husband back in the day. So we've kind of come full circle, which is mm. really cool. Yeah, yeah that's very. amazing. Aaron, what are the the long-term goals of the Northern Lights? What, where do you see the organization in, say, five years? Uh, I would love to be able to kind of have, you know, because Canada is so big, um, my goal is to kind of have a base camp with within kind of BC area and then something out, you know, back, back east. Um, so then we can have these younger girls that are coming. We can do camps, you know, like in the summertime, we can do clinics. It's kind of my goal to just have a place where girls, you know, can come and we can foster those skills and help them gain that confidence and then, you know, funnel them into the WNXL and compete, hopefully pro one day. Awesome. Yeah. 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 For everybody awesome. out there, what's Ninja Ball? Yeah. I got to know too. Ninja Ball is uh, Danny Court runs it. He owns DBS Doodlebug Sports. It's where a lot of the guys from like I think Thunder played. Um, you know, Jimmy Hickey goes up there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Shout out to Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. I think we, Jimmy, we have a very thoughtful question from him for you from the Discord in here. We'll get to that in a second. Don't want to interrupt. Okay. But Jimmy is just the man. He's so nice. He's been super supportive of the team. You know, he's making us um, some hats, I think some 
toques or uh, beanies, whatever you yeah. guys call it. Right. Um, <laughs> the toques. <laughs> the toques. He's making us some toques. And uh, he, I think he was one of the first paintball photographers yeah. in like 2012 that took pictures of me, you know, which is also one of those things that I think is really big, especially for up and coming players. Like, people want to see themselves look cool. They want to be able to share that. Oh, yeah. um, and I think that's a, a way to grow the sport too, right? People sharing on yeah. social media and people being like, what is that? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, Jimmy's a good guy. He's invited us to to play with him and the boys um, from Uprising. So hopefully we can get something organized. Just one of the best That'd dudes be ever. I'm actually wearing a Finley hat that he sent. And these are custom goat hats. We're giving away hey, a couple whoa, of them. Whoa, hold up. Yours are in the mail. Uh, Don't worry about it. I what? know yours are what do you mean? Mail, sorry, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I checked the mailbox today. It's not. It's not in the mail. It's coming. It's in the mail. It's, okay, I, all right. Hundred percent. I didn't even realize. I thought that was one of the original goat hats. Yeah, yeah you got the, you got the string and everything. I got the. Yeah, the, nice. if I go kayaking or you know I'm out yeah. on the white waters, I got the uh, yeah. the the chin strap to hey, keep this thing I'd, from flying off. That's a brilliant uh, invention he had there. It really is so simple and just brilliant. I'm like, <laughs> I know it's the it's the most simple things that are like mind blowing. You're like, how did yeah, I not think totally. of that? <laughs> totally, he's totally. a legend, absolute yeah. legend. Aaron, with that, we're gonna we're gonna segue into the Discord questions here, and I'll jump. I'll start off with Jimmy's question. He goes. Aaron, first off, congrats on the new team. So stoked to see how this season goes and excited for our practice with you guys. So that was referring to the uprising practice there. My question, how can the paintball community help squash some of the negativity around the WNXL? As a male-dominated sport, it shocks me to see some of the backlash you guys are getting for simply wanting to play ball at the highest level in a women-specific division. How can we help turn the conversation around to highlight the positive of this? I think, honestly, we already are. You know, it's... it's Agreed. I'm guilty of responding to those guys online because I get really frustrated. Um, but it's, you know what, those people that are criticizing us, they're not the people that are help growing the sport. You know, people totally. that matter aren't listening to those people. So it's continuing as we are, staying positive, you know, proving ourselves. Um, and I think we're on the right path and those people will disappear eventually. 100%. Yeah. It, it's a shame with, with, social media and the internet like a, a vocal minority can sound like the majority you know if they're loud enough and it's it's just not the case you know almost anybody i've talked to about it in person is so excited for the wnxl and understands how tremendous this is for our sport you know as a whole mm -hmm. uh to finally cultivate you know female talent and and give them a place give women a place to come and feel comfortable playing because yeah, the gun is the great equalizer, but, you know, it could still be intimidating. Like you said, you show up to the field and, you know, sometimes feel ostracized or, you know, you feel like like you can't get games in. Um, yeah, we don't want anyone to feel like that. And so I, it's, again, tremendous. And, you know, you have every pro that I know is is on the side of this and understands the vision and, and is all in on it. So whoever it is online, I, we just leave them in the past, you know, leave them there. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't even stay, remember right their there games. On their computers. Yeah. Yeah. Take it easy <laughs> exactly. out there. Come on, man. Let's boost. <laughs> Let's boost. And the things actually, I see online about us, about the NXL, I mean, it just doesn't matter what you're doing. People yeah. are going to have something to say. And it usually is more reflection on themselves and how they feel about themselves than anything else, in all honesty. Yeah. And when people, so. I found just in life in general, and people are criticizing you being negative, it usually means you're doing something right. So there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not wrong. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Houston, Heat has your back, the entire WNXL. And actually, Randy, owner of Houston, Heat, it's one of the things that he's most proud of wow. as one of the co-owners of the NXL is the WNXL mm -hmm. and spearheading, making sure that the ladies have a platform to, to live big, you know, and have fun out there. So we got y'all's back forever on Thank that you. regard. And uh, let's see, we got um, Chad Figs. Thank you, everyone in the Discord, for tapping in. We always have a ton of questions. Everyone in PTG Nation, y'all are the best. Chad Figs, Aaron, representing an entire country in the uh, WNXL this year has to be exciting. How do you plan to coordinate practices with your team being so spread out? Yeah, no pressure, right? A whole country <laughs> relying on me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my biggest goal is, you know, I understand people have lives, you know, we have women that have children, we have students. So I want to make it 
accessible and affordable for everybody. So the idea is we have this big tryout this weekend. You know, people are flying in, we meet everybody, and then to have kind of the East Coast camp and the West Coast camp. So, you know, that mm. lineup can play together, the West Coast lineup can play together, come together a couple of times before each event, you know, yeah. but keep it accessible and be be reasonable, right? People aren't made of money, you know, everybody's paying out of pocket for this. Um, so I think that's kind of kind of be the key. Love that. Yeah, you're absolutely awesome. right. Yeah. 100%. All right, we have Kaylin from Inspired Paintball. He wants to know, Aaron, what female specific gear would you like to see produced? Or do you feel like that isn't necessary? You know, 10 years ago, I was like, I would give a thousand dollars for a pair of paintball pants that fit me. <laughs> you know, it was the big space pants. They yeah. might the crotch would be down to my knee. And I was like, I would just love a pair of pants. But now with the jogger style and, you know, I'm the kind of person like I don't want padding. I want to be like as slim as possible, as movable as possible. So mm -hmm. I think we're kind of totally. we're going in the direction that I like. You know, I think I don't think we need anything. Awesome. Yeah. women specific yeah and he he also said congrats on uh on joining the wnxl that is <laughs> huge you. and that's so amazing what you have done we can't wait to see the squad take the field in huh. uh in florida it's gonna be crazy it's on it's it's still like you know i have my flights booked we have everything booked and it's still like it doesn't feel real like it's just the last month everything's happened really quickly and everybody's so excited and i'm like I think when I get off the plane, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, we're here. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I have just one request. Can you please bring me an ice cap from Tim Hortons? Yeah, Ooh. it's going to be a little <laughs> warm, but I'll put it in a thermos. For you. <laughs> That's oh, my gosh. It, that is uh, it's the best. It's the best thing. Uh, best little treat that you'll ever have from a coffee place. If for those of you out there. And I think we Timmy's. actually finally did open a few. Um, uh, in the U S we do have some Tim Hortons up in the, in the Northeast. Like where was I? I think I was in Columbus. They have a Tim Hortons by the level okay. up. Here. And I was like, I was like blown away. I was like so excited about it. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, it was like one of the, it was one of the places that I was forced to go to when I went there, you know, first went there over 10 years ago. And, mm -hmm. uh, every time I'd been back to Canada, I was like, that's the first stop. I need a small little ice cap from, uh, <laughs> from Tim Hortons. You got it. I'll bring you one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's it literally, everything. it's like a religion. It, it's a religion. It's in so Canada. good. Yeah. It's, it's all so sugar. Good. It's like, it's 100%. All sugar. You're just sugar. high there as like, from sugar. <laughs> there is nothing good for you. It, there's nothing about it that's good for you. Cream and sugar. No. Um, but quite amazing. About it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Oh, but uh -huh. it's so good. That's so good. That and beaver tails. Yeah, beaver mm. tails are pretty good. That yep. and beaver tails. Anytime like you go to like things. a farm market, somebody has <laughs> beaver tails. People are like, what the hell is that? And it's, it's just dough with sugar, pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo. It's like a nice, yeah. nice donut. I thought you were actually talking about like a beaver I tail. I know. Oh, oh it's horrible. Yeah. We love beavers. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. That's wild. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Delicious. All right. So uh, we got to show love to GSI guy. That is a uh, guy. Yes. Oh, guy. He's the one who spearheaded getting you on the show here. So thank you, GSI guy, for making the connections. And uh, we're so honored to have you on here, Aaron. He says, hi, Aaron. Canada ballers appreciate you and everything you're doing. Not easy, especially when you have very little backing. My question, what is your number one short-term goal and number one long-term goal for the team? Short-term is just having a solid lineup go out there and just kind of empowering these girls to feel ready and confident and giving them all the tools that they need. You know, I'm trying to make it as affordable as possible. Long-term, it's really hard. You know, I, I, I'm like I said, I'm trying to build that legacy so that these people are coming out, you know, when we go to the field, they're bringing their daughters and they're like six or seven. Long-term is to have those girls coming to play, um, but again, making it accessible and affordable, right? Paintball, especially in Canada, is very expensive. We're at a disadvantage where we don't have many fields. We don't have any brick and mortar stores. Um, so everything that we're buying is coming from the States. We're paying brokerage on it. Um, so I'm just trying to find ways to make that more affordable and more accessible to people because I don't want money to ever be a barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're an icon and also big mm -hmm. trophies. 
you, know, you guys, North Northern ter- Territories are going to bring a big trophy up there, thanks to Aaron. And we can't wait for that day because that very well could happen. You guys are going to work hard and and uh, go for the gold, you know? Yeah. I I mean, I, I like to have fun and winning's fun to me. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Winning is definitely fun. Aaron, thank you so much. Um, please let everybody know where they can follow the team and yourself uh, for this season's, you know, activities. Yep, we have a Facebook page, Northern Lights Paintball, and Instagram, Northern Lights PB. Um, we, we post all of our roster hopefuls. You know, once uh, we finalize our roster next week, we'll be posting that. And we're just going to keep everybody up to date, you know, who our sponsors are and really just – this journey from the ground up. So people see that they can do awesome. it too. Yeah. yeah, definitely keep us in the loop. Uh, tag us in any content that you have and we'll Makes be sense. sure to share it on uh, PTG's, you know, platform there. And thank you to your boss. You know, I know you're hiding out here, hiding from the boss. Uh, thank you for taking the time. <laughs> I'll take him. <laughs> yeah, thank you I just for, put a note uh, on really... the door like, I'm busy. Please text me if you need anything. <laughs> Working yeah, on a, a new script. Important you know? yeah. Really important stuff. Don't disturb me. <laughs> really important stuff. Well, we can't oh, thank you goodness. enough for stopping by. And uh, yeah, we can't guys. wait to see you soon. We'll see you in Florida shortly here. Yeah, one month away. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, awesome. thanks, can't guys. Wait. Thank you. Thank you, you Aaron. Have a good night. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Peace. Bye. Outstanding. All right. Absolutely. She's an icon. Icon. Yeah, Straight fantastic. Up. She's going to be a dominator. I, I cannot wait to see. We're going to see so many great personalities evolve uh, from the WNXL, which I'm so excited for, you know. Um, and it's yeah. really good timing because in other sports right now, you're seeing um, with the, the women's side of sports is kind of taken off. You know, the WNBA, I think, is, in, is better than it's ever been. Um, you're seeing superstars uh, and, you know, paintball, same thing. Let's see the superstars, mm-hmm. you know, let's yep. see the superstars, the, the female superstars. And I, I cannot say enough good things about this damn documentary. Truly. Like I'm not overhyping it. We all watched it, you know, Ryan, uh, Nick Laval, Kyle, myself. Um, we all watched it with Anthony and Lori in the room. And I was just like floored at how good it was. Um, so I, yeah, I'm a fan. I really am. Who did that fan, production? So. Uh, Nobody we know. Anthony hired some some random, you know, professional that mm-hmm. came in and did a fan, I think, pretty sure, did a fantastic job. I mean, my goodness, it is just so well done. So Do well we know done. when that is dropping for the public. Yeah, I, I think in the next week. I think soon. Okay. I think soon. So stay tuned, everybody. That'll yeah, be stay dropping tuned for soon. sure. I think soon. And it could be a game changer for paintball as a whole, you know, if, if uh, that makes waves and it really has a splash. Um, it's an inspiring story, and we can't wait to see it all the way through 2023. I'm sure they're going to be dropping multiple episodes throughout the year on this thing. Yeah, 100%. It, it is multiple episodes. Um, this is just the first episode. It's like a little over 20 minutes. And, uh, I mean, just really cool. You know, the the whole message of what they're doing and, and what they're trying to do with the WNXL it makes you buy in. You know, I'm yeah. a fan. Support it. All right, we got Fry Dog. I just sent him the invite. There we go. Harrison Fry hopping in next. And then while we're waiting for him, we can just drop a couple more current events that have happened. We have uh, G.J. Sakaguchi. He went to the Brooklyn Bears. That's another. He was kind of in the the camp, you know, with Thunder, um, but officially with the Bears. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I uh, I don't know if I even knew that one. What other kind of news you got over there? Well, we got um, Colin Laster is on Baltimore Revo. That broke this week, so congrats to Colin. And Impact picked up oh. Tyler Panlilio, and he's a local yeah. of Capital Edge Paintball Park, and I absolutely love that kid. Tyler has got a great head on his shoulders, and uh, he has the potential to do really great things in paintball if he keeps his head down and just works hard and, and makes, you know, like we talk about religiously on the show, just taking those necessary steps to be the best that you can be, putting in the work, and, you know, just kind of being quiet, taking the lumps, working hard and making sure that you're moving in the right direction. Tyler has a really bright future and he's surrounded by amazing paintball players. Um, obviously, Impact's one of the best yeah, teams in the world. Sure. And he's going to get to pick the brains of some really heavy hitters, you know. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And hopefully we see him get some play time and get out on that pro field and and uh, really evolve. You know, that's a big part of it. Um, you got to be right. able to see some spins. You know, uh, in the events. Otherwise, it it can get really tough. It can get really tough mm -hmm. as a young buck to. Uh, hey, how old is he? I'm not even sure how how old he is. I think he's in his is uh, right around twenty, early twenties. Okay, somewhere yeah, in there. Perfect. Yeah. A good good time for him. All right, we have Harrison Fry. Let's see, Harry. What's Yo, up? where are you, we Harry? Don't... We can't yeah, see you. We... <laughs> can't see me. Why not? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Are you in a dark are you room? On... Uh, are you on Google no, Chrome? Yeah, I'm on Brave. It's the same oh, thing as Google boy. Chrome. Oh, boy. It's got to be either Google Chrome or uh, I think Firefox. Those are the two supporters. I told you this. I told you this, Harry. Ooh. Dude, literally Google Chrome is brave. I, it's like the same. It's the same. Literally, app. it is not, mate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, li literally, <laughs> it is not the same. It is, is that what I literally like? two different things. Yeah. You need to get Google <laughs> Chrome, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ty, one second. Right. I got to use the restroom. All right. Yep. My... Bathroom break. Um, hey, while, uh, while you get Google Chrome, I'm going to do a shout out to my boys, Lost Cause lighten everyone's dumpsters on fire the logo on their jersey is a uh, dumpster on fire in florida i did a training event this last weekend in florida at palm bay uh palm bay paintball park so shout out to lost cause uh much love to everybody out there so harrison we can't see you yet are you working on google chrome i'm working it give me a second <laughs> okay perfect but uh regardless how are you doing what's going on dude uh i'm doing good I, there's some some i don't know I got, got a bunch of notifications on my phone in like the last hour. I'll bet. I don't know. <laughs> I'll bet your phone's just doing backflips. It's blown up. I think I broke the internet. I clearly broke yeah. the internet because my, my computer, my camera's not working now. That's okay. That's <laughs> right. It just looks like you're in a very, like the lights might be off. You know, no, we're just going to say the lights are off. Lights are on. You can <laughs> see anything or just black. It's just completely black screen. But right, um, yeah, I'm going to restart <laughs> this. Okay. He's, he's well, restart on Google he's Chrome. Back. I told him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's your teammate. Oh, boy. That's my boy. That's my teammate. <laughs> I told him. I love him. So if he, he, better, he better be able to follow game plans better than he followed the instructions to get on the show. You see, you see what I'm saying? You see, and you, see and what you, I'm saying? you better be bringing the freshest avocados we've ever seen. All right? If he doesn't bring the best guacamole I've ever had, yeah. I don't know. It's gonna I be don't a know. tough All this talk about the guac. All this talk <laughs> yeah. about the guac. <laughs> yeah, the oh, man. king, man. Um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome to see him take the field with Dynasty. And uh, I'm sure, you know, I don't know how the infamous camp is feeling. We'll obviously talk with him about that and see, you know, what that was like uh, making that departure. Yeah. But that's a that is a big loss for Infamous because that was one of their big attackers yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's tough for any organization to lose uh, one of your starting players. Period. You know, yeah. uh, and when that happens, you you gotta do your best to fill the role, and you know maybe give a new player a, a chance. You know, kind of take it a, yeah. a step back and see. You know, are we gonna try to go and pay a player? Or are we gonna try to give you know more spins to someone like Jonah, who could really turn into a great, great. Uh, he already is a pretty great young attacker, right? He could turn into mm -hmm. a you know, well-seasoned veteran over the next couple of years that could be a big contributor. So um, you're right. while it's a bummer, it's also an opportunity for other players to step up. And um, yeah. That's right. Yeah, what are you going to do, gonna right? What, what, are, what, what are your are you options? Do? Step up. You got to step up. Somebody's got to fill the shoes and get the job done. Now what? Right. Yeah. That's that. I remember you saying it, it was either now what or what now or what are you going to do yeah. about it? That's right. Mm -hmm. What your dad always said to you, you know, like yeah. any, any issue, like what are you going to do about what are you it? Gonna do? You got to do something. Yeah. You got to do yeah. something. hundred percent. Yeah. And he hundred percent hammered that one into my head, dude. It was like um, and essentially what he's saying when he's saying, you know, what are you going to do about it? What What are you going to do? He's saying, what are you going to do? Muck about you going to just wallow about or what are you going to do? You're going to stand up and be strong, right? You're going to fill the shoes, right? You're going to make things happen, right? And, and there he is. <laughs> Look at, we got him. 
double hand there loose. we go the double hand loose. Hand loose. oh Let's boy go. what are these uh, armpit tattoos you got you got to show those off on the show oh uh, well it says the beach is that way oh that my way. god he's flexing on pt I, I think it says <laughs> dynasty on his left bicep Yes, yeah. it does. I just Damn, got it. You yeah. already got the dynasty tag? That's <laughs> crazy. Got it. <laughs> Bro, you haven't even met the guys. I never met him. He's met, met all of us. <laughs> have no, even have met you ever guys. met have you ever met uh Damien? That's yeah, I, I I I found Damien. You I know found him. thinks he found Damien. Dude, you found him. Tell I, us. I don't think I found him. Damien. Uh I don't think so, I found Damien. I went to a WCPO. I don't I don't take ownership of that. You go, <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not my that's not my work. <laughs> I went to a WCPL and he was there and we played um with the uh it's the dude you guys know him they're Southern California dudes. Um and we played and then like the next weekend was an MXL and I was like, I need a semi pro guy. And he was cool. I was like, yo, you're in. And uh and the rest is history. And then for, for, then me, for played, Mexico, yeah, for, I brought him for the first Mexico event. Uh, yeah, then, so that's where I first. I, I right. never knew and Damien until found until the Scorpions. I mean, again, I, I I don't I wouldn't say that I found him. I don't think I even take any credit for that. Um, <laughs> I was down there, saw him same weekend as Skinny Kevin. I actually didn't think he was that good the first time I was in Mexico and and watched him play. I was like. He's just kind of lazy and, and sits in the Dorito one. And then the next time he like, yeah. And then the next time he played fantastic. He was attacking on the Dorito side. They won the event. And I was like, whoa, where was that Damien? That Damien's really good. Um, and then, you know, uh, skinny Kevin saw the same thing and uh, was a big proponent of getting him on the team. And I was like, yeah, young athletic, you know, he's awesome. He's super fun to be around. Damien is definitely a riot, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't take credit. I don't deserve credit for that. You could have all that credit. <laughs> That's all you. He was. Uh, I think he was no. just out in uh, Florida playing some ten man out. There. Yeah, saw some videos. Yeah, yeah we were hanging. Out. We were hanging there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How was it out there? Talk to us about that. Oh, it was great. It was a great weekend. I, I played with Infamous, um, and we we had a great time. We got third place. Um, yeah. Ooh. What happened in the uh, the final games? Like, walk us through that because Shock took it right after Shock won the event. Okay, so. Shock beat us. We got, man, we got like so many penalties in the last three games. Um, and it just totally ruined it for us. But uh, Shock beat us the first game. We got, so if, if anyone knows, you play the top three teams make finals, right? So yeah, team yeah. one, team mm -hmm. two, team three all play each other. So you play two games in finals. And it's the best of the scores that determines first place, second place, third place. Obviously, there's different points, right? For a pull, and a sh if you shoot somebody or if you have a body alive, there's different point margins. And if you hang a flag, it's the most points. Um, so it, it, in the finals and in the later stages of the tournaments, uh, it gets really technical on like, okay, we need three bodies alive and we need to shoot all of them. If we shoot all of them and win the game, but we don't have, you know, yeah. three bodies alive, we might we might still lose the the tournament, you know. So so it gets really technical, um, and that that's you know, uh, communication. Everything's really much more important. Um, mm -hmm. So they beat us the first game. They had a few bodies alive, I forget. And then, um, then we had to play again um, against Cap Factory, and we were like, we were so up. We were. I was down the Doritos, and I was like, or the mounds we were called the Dorito side. Yeah. And I was like, we are. You know, when you have that feeling, like there's no way we're losing this. Like we're winning this mm -hmm. tournament, mm -hmm. or we're winning this game at least. And uh, then we got a gross major from, from one of our players in the middle and i'm like oh god we're not gonna win this <laughs> so i just started going forward i got like all the way to their side and who got and the gross beat. major uh ryan rodarte yeah it was, it was <laughs> i heard you got the gross major so it's really good to that hear was, that it wasn't you that was before it was another one that honestly <laughs> the, the ref <laughs> That wasn't. That was a prelim. Damn that it, was um, semifinals. That was semifinals. <laughs> okay. If you okay, want to hear okay, the story okay, of that, okay. I'll tell you. But the the yeah, refing yeah, was yeah. incredible. I've never. It was impossible to like like, because you're down in a valley. Um, yeah. all the refs are on the mounds, and there's refs like on the on the mountain kind of thing where that you yeah. saw the guess. Well, Tiki's and, paintball, uh, brother. They don't play around yeah, out Tiki's there. Yeah, Tiki's amazing, dude. Yeah. yeah, there was no like, there was no gray area on any of that. Um, I've never, I've never had such hawk eyes. Um, 
Yeah, dude. I was actually Maybe just you're at Tiki's. You were too, Marsh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, two weekends ago. Yeah, yeah. It's a great yeah, and, the, and like you can stand above all of the fields. Like all the fields right. are kind of in a little bit of a, 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 a hole or like a ditch. So there's, you know, the dirt mounds like you can stand above and get a bird's eye view so maybe that is the way we need to be refing paintball they all need to be on a platform i feel like that's how we need to watch paintball too i would love if the stands were just way higher i think that would be you know so much better um whoa yeah, long this story, is a but this is a huge idea you just dig a hole and then the players play down there <laughs> yeah Dude. yeah just dig a <laughs> no but, dig but a hole. <laughs> But what, wow. what is re I really do think like there's there should be an ultimate ref on like where Maddie is yeah like where, where yeah. the where the so, go sports oh guys are God. or something like and it's so easy for him to say hey check this player whatever because yeah. you see so much when you're when you're for back sure. like because you see the splash right you don't even need to look at anything you just you see that that splash mm -hmm. and that's why yeah. you know when we're watching paintball we're like oh how did the ref miss that because he's too close right damn yeah yeah my mind is blown all right all right <laughs> I just I think dig that. a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean what have we been doing we'll just bring the d11s and the uh the backhoes out to every tournament we'll just dig a huge hole and then yeah net i think the whole you know net it and we're set tom's Where gonna have to that? negotiate some new uh <laughs> yeah i know it's a it's a joke i'm not actually serious but i was talking um, to the, the oh i'm serious um, <laughs> what's uh what's that Ka kansas city um paintball mm -hmm. park thing with the yeah. new one they K Casey All -Stars. All Stars, yep, yeah, and they play their field. Mm -hmm. They play at. I was talking to the owner, that dude. Uh, you guys probably know him. Um, yeah. and he said he put he put uh, tractor trailer trucks, uh, compartments, what, container containers yeah. all around his field, and he's gonna have like walkways going up. So it'll be like literally in an arena. It, it'll feel yes. like he's starting. El Paso actually in El Paso. <clears throat> El Paso paintball did that as well. They have like the conics you know, boxes mm -hmm. and they put those all around the field and it actually is really crazy. The different perspective you have on the game and you can see everything mm -hmm. that's going on. So that that's actually a pretty interesting idea. Um, you know, it's an extremely hard job to ref paintball. And if there's any way that we can come up with an economical that isn't going to, you know, break the bank uh, way to view it and to, to ref it, I think it's worth, you know, taking a look at because in all reality, without these referees, you know, it's the, it's their job to uphold the integrity of this sport and this game, because, uh, otherwise, you know, it's going to get lawless and, and the games just won't run the way that they're supposed to. i really think the easiest way is just to put one ref on the top, like give it, mm -hmm. get him get him a tower and, it's so easy for him to say D1 on his hopper inside. It's so easy or whatever it is. Well, you need one on totally both sides, angry. you know, but yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, sides, yeah, anything's side. better than, than nothing. But yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Put them on well, top. Of I them mean, whatever. It's so easy. Let's all be honest. Well, they here. did you start doing want. that. Actually, actually, they did start doing that. They, they, um, there's a <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> uh, I don't remember which event it was last year. Maybe I don't, and I don't recall seeing it at world cup, but at one of the events, I remember the head ref was on a platform uh, uh -huh. at, at yep. like center court. I don't remember what event, right. maybe it was Orlando. Maybe it was the first one, but he was uh, on a platform up there. Mm -hmm. Chicago. Yeah. I was going to say like, Chicago. Was it Chicago? I just Chicago. am like, I, think so. I don't know. All the yeah, rain made me feel it like it wasn't that event, but yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I remember. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, no, how, no matter how you slice it, it's a difficult task roughing paintball tournaments. Um, yeah. But it's one of the most important jobs that we have at the paintball field, you know. And that's mm -hmm. not just for mm -hmm. the tournaments; that's the the local fields and uh, everybody making sure that the game is is being played properly. Yeah, I, I mean, I used to ref uh, at Boston Paintball. Um, a lot of his tournaments that the NEXL for for Anthony. Yeah, uh, for like years. I mean, it was different. You know, in New England, that was like the sponsorship. Like, if you were sponsored by Boston Paintball, you also had to, uh, you know, yep. ref the events. So, I, and it was it was good growing up too. Like, you get you get a different perspective, and you you learn that way too. It's more time on the field, uh, you know, watch paintball yeah. and figuring out how to ref it. It's it's another perspective. I think for anyone growing up, it's should have that experience too, not just playing, yeah. but 
and it's a great way to earn like paint too. You could ref at the field, right. earn some paint, uh, get entry to your park. Um, if you're looking to stay sharp and play as much paintball as possible, I know that I was at the paintball park working for the owner, cleaning bunkers, you know, doing some refing, whatever I could do to get a couple of bags of paint and get that entry to save me some money so I could play more. That's a right. that's a great way to do that. So Harry, you got to talk to us, dude. You're on San Diego Dynasty, bro. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I was saying my phone's blowing up. I'm not answering anybody right now, so I'm just I'm ignoring everyone. It's too much going on. Uh, yeah, it's probably going crazy. I would imagine. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's it's cool. Um, I feel really good. Uh, I feel really good about it. I've been talking to Marcelo, uh, a few of the other guys, and um, ready for for a good season and and beyond. Are you in the team chat yet? They got you in there? No, they're they're racist <laughs> against Android users. So Harrison has an Android. This is a big problem. We we almost Whoa. decided no no I dice. Mean, Can't pick them up. Can't pick them up. You're gonna come through and just mess with the team chat like that. So we're working on like quick. a back a backdoor kind of hack so hey that guys. we can get him in there. Hey Tyler, how's, how's you seen Android. he looking this year? <laughs> Dude, shout out to the right. androids out there one time. Can I, hey, Paul, let them know one time, yeah. Paul. I know hey, you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OG Guys, Paul. Guys, you don't understand Android. until you try it. It's way better. Oh, I'm my done, gosh. Done no, you don't both. understand until you buy into the iPhone. Like I've done wait, it. I've done how it. long ago? How long ago? Because I've had so many people it. convert. So many people converted from the Android, and they're like, oh, my gosh, iPhone, Apple, everything. It's just so easy. So can the other way, bro. The other way, no too. way. It's it's uh, like you're a you sheep. Just, you just like, like want to be different. You, you just want to be different. You just want to be awesome. different. That's all. It's in my blood. That's, it's that's, not want. It's like it's it is. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're doing it to like make a statement. That's why it's like sorry, dude. We're so yeah, Harrison. Uh, we're gonna have to like copy and paste the important stuff for now and just send it to him directly. But yeah, we he's not in the team chat yet. We're gonna have to figure this out. We're gonna have to really figure this out. We're this we're, serious, we're working Harrison. on something. We he you might have to Instagram just get a business chat. phone. You know, you might have to. Yeah, yeah. We got him on the Instagram chat. We do have a no, Instagram get, get team chat, which is oh, okay. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Send you in it right now. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> so obviously, let this be a lesson to all you young kids. <laughs> no, don't, no. Don't, don't don't be an Android user. <laughs> this is here's the lesson: you can still get on Dynasty without an iPhone. <laughs> Boom! That's the lesson. Boom! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh man! Yep. Droid life. Uh, Hashtag. Let's go. All right. So, talk to us uh, about the the transition. How did this all come about? Um, what was the deciding factor in you making the move over to San Diego Dynasty? And I'm sure, um, you know, I, I hope infamous is supporting you on the move but what has that been like as well from from that aspect yeah uh i mean i was two weeks ago in in bali um and i was i was actually talking to sk just about what uh some of our, we, we play in mexico together so we we're just talking about whatever uh and then and then he's like hey did did you get marcelo's message and i was like no i didn't because i was uh he tried to text me on iMessage but it didn't work <laughs> um, no, I, and then this I, and guy then has me message him on, on like WhatsApp. Like you're, you're like Oliver, dude. They're like you don't have a real phone. You don't even have a real like. Isn't text messaging basically free now? You're like worried about using data. I'm, Oliver's oh, in the Stone Age. He, no, he doesn't know. He's like, he's like, why don't why don't we use WhatsApp? I'm like, you have an iPhone. Why don't we use iMessage? iMessage. It's so literally the same thing. It's free. He has an iPhone. Yeah, he has an iPhone. No, no but he there. like insists on using WhatsApp. <laughs> and I'm like, Oliver, iMessage is literally the same thing. He's like, you pay all this, you know, for data. I'm like, no, iMessage is free. It's over the internet. You know, it's, <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Uh, it, no, yeah, I, I don't think it is. It is I'm telling you. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> like, okay. Or I could use this, this app that's a little outdated, but it's a great app. It's a it's a solid app. It's WhatsApp. What app yeah. is it? it? It is what, the app. <laughs> what app is it? What's app? <laughs> What's app, Poppy? What's, What's app, app, Poppy? So yeah, uh, how did, how did the transition go, dude? I'm sure it wasn't easy. I know, uh, you know, you probably got infamous wanting to kick your door in. Um, what what's going on, dude? Yeah, honestly, it was it was like three days of like I seriously not sleep very much. Um, Part of that was just being up, talk, trying to like talk to my teammates and, and friends, uh, like, you know, 
I had a bunch of a few people that I called and had confidential conversations with, get their opinion on it. Um, I talked to my wife a lot about it. Uh, and it's just a difficult decision, man. It, it really is. Yeah. It, it, it got to like, I, I like one night I was, I like drove to like this random rice paddy far away and just like sat there for hours and was like watching the moon and like the, the, the rice paddies and, uh, what did they say? Like back, back. And, <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> they kept whispering. D Y N A S T. Fry? Why not? D Y N A S T. Fry. 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 We're making changes to the team. I might have to do the next change. <laughs> Damn. Uh, if you win an MVP performance, I will chant the shit out of that. Yes. We win a tournament right. and you're the MVP. You got Record it, my it. man. Yep. Mark it down. Oh, no, it's a, it's, re, it's recording. This is the boom. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it was like, just, you know, I called Travis. I, I called, uh, well, actually, so I, it was like three days of that. Um, and then right before I was, I was going to call Travis, I, I somehow the, the information leaked and, uh, people were texting me and like, Hey, what's going on? I'm like, Oh, I got to call Travis right now and, and, you know, make sure he doesn't hear this from any, any other source. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, we, we talked for a while and it kind of ended like, all right, I'm going to stay. And that was like, that just threw me for a whole nother loop. And then I had another two days of like going back and forth. And then I, I had another conversation with them and I, I just, I'm like, so I was so kind of uh, emotionally attached to, to infamous and, and, you know, all my friends on there and, and Travis and, um, and what, what he's done for me and what, what infamous done for me. And then, uh, it, it just came down to it. I was actually like working out and I had like my adrenaline going and I was like, this is doing it. I'm doing it right now. And I, so I finished my workout and I, and I wrote a big message to Travis. I'm like, this is the deal, man. I have to do this. Uh, I really feel it's right for me. Um, I know it hurts you and, and hurts the team. I, I really don't like that. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, uh, I have to do this for me. And, uh, and that was that. And then, uh, yeah, it's, and I, it's then I got an message. Then what happened? Then I got an iPhone. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> then he got an iPhone. That's like part yeah. of his signing bonus. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. No, yeah, it's, that's, yeah, that's I know. Tough, I, I, uh, I, yeah, I hate I hurting my friends, but, uh, well, you know, your friends are going to support you on your journey. You know, friends are going to be there yeah. for you. And it's obviously not an easy transition, but it's, it's about this is professional sports, first of all. And, you know, if, if you feel like that's the next evolution of your journey and, and that's, what's in alignment with, with your highest self and what you want to accomplish, you gotta, you gotta stand by, you know, your heart. And, and, uh, like I said, the, the people that are going to be there for you, they will continue to be there for you. And I know that those guys will continue to be there for you because they're great guys. Infamous Mm -hmm. has an amazing camp and they have a lot of players that can step up and, be really great out there on that starting line. So it, it also like, really? you know, Marcelo, we we're talking about it. It's a great opportunity as well. You know, um, this is a door opening for another player to come in, in that camp and really show what they've got and make a statement as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd say, you know, most players that, so I called everyone now and, you know, talked to them personally and uh, most of my former teammates and in infamous were, you know, supportive and like, Hey, you know, go do what you need to do. You know, we're still friends. A uh, few, few are, are, are kind of mad at me and um, yeah, I hope to, to rekindle that relationship. Um, and I'm sure it'll, it'll be rekindled at some point. Um, it'll make for some great paintball games, bud. <laughs> I'm telling you. So we were playing in this, uh, the, the first game, our first match, first tournament. Um, they're in our bracket. First tournament. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this in three, four weeks. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my bounce vest. I'm probably going to get overshot. I'm, <laughs> I'm not wearing a bounce vest, but I'm ready to get overshot for sure. And the truth <laughs> shall not gonna set happen, you Harry. free. Not going to happen. <laughs> well, I, have to get, I have to get shot out first to, in order to get overshot. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is true. So yeah, let's, um, let's shoot for that to not happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the bounce vest, that's a good move, dude. You know, ain't nothing wrong Don't with that. <laughs> <laughs> Neck guard, gloves. Yeah. Going Kick it yeah. old school. Har- you know what I'm saying? Harrison, yeah, talk to us a little bit about a, a little bit more about that decision because it's actually something 
that a lot of players ask myself, they've probably come to you with similar, you know, uh, advice that they're seeking. I know, I know they've asked Tyler and it's often, you know, they're on a team with a lot of their friends and they basically get a, a, an offer to play for a better team that might be in a higher division or might take things a little more seriously or whatever it might be. Those players are always so conflicted on it because it is so hard. It, it really is paintball. While it is a professional sport, it's also a, a small sport. So um, relationships and friendships and who you do it with definitely does matter. Um, <clears throat> but some of the advice that I always give to those players is at the end of the day, you really need to be where you feel like Tyler said, you're going to be able to maximize your potential where you feel like you're going to be with uh, players that are in line with what your goals are, you know, in an organization that's in line with what your goals are not saying infamous wasn't infamous to me is, is one of the better organizations in the league. Love what Travis has done, but um, that's, that's one of those conversations that it's so tough (laughs) to have with your friends. Um, and I've always personally tried my best, you know, whether it's with Tyler or Dalton or Kyle, who, whoever it is, mouse, when, when he had left teams that we were on to put friendships before you put before paintball, right? At the end of the day, if the friendship is, is a real friendship, if it, um, truly matters, then you're going to put that before paintball. And I don't mean as far as leaving the team. I mean, if, if your teammate leaves, like, if you feel this is what's best for you and I'm your friend, then I want that for you as well. You know, and, and, um, it's a really hard thing I think for people to grasp, you know, you get this like territorial, um, sentiment over your, your close friends, or, you know, I don't really, really know how to explain it. Cause I haven't quite felt it, you know? Um, <clears throat> but you just went through this. And so what advice would you give to players if they're faced with this decision? Uh, how did you come to your decision? Yeah. Uh, Besides actually, the, the rice the best, patties. <laughs> the, the rice patties told me. Um, no, to be honest, the best piece of advice I got was I had a pretty long conversation with Yosh and he's, you guys both know Yosh very well. He's, he's, it was very like, Hey man, this is, he was not pushy. Actually, no one, no one was pushy on, on dynasty at all. It was totally like, Hey, whatever you need to do. Um, but he, he basically just said, Hey, follow your heart. Like whatever mm-hmm. you feels right for you then then you do it um and we're going to support you either way um and like that was just it was just pulling me um yeah for me too it was like <clears throat> you know being around new guys who are, are all amazing paintball players um just like the players on infamous but just anytime you're around a new group of guys you're going to get so many more perspectives and so many more different uh different ways to do things and and just knowledge that that I'm really, really looking forward to, to absorbing um, mm-hmm. and taking into perspective and an account um, and yeah, learning a lot. But, uh, you know, in, in like, gr- I think growing up, I've, I've always, I've always done that. Um, this is a, for the most part, a solo sport. I mean, you, you see a lot of, uh, so like it, not a solo sport, but in, in like a career path uh, and, and most sports in general are, are like you, you make uh, your best decision uh, for you. Uh, for yourself, for your career going forward. But I think even more so here, because there's not really, uh, it's starting to happen with the paintball combine and, and things like that, but it's, it's very like, there's no coaching. It's, you kind of just show up to the field and like jump on. That's how you start the sport. Right. So, so mm-hmm. like, you know, you, you go online and you like look for dudes that are playing on Sunday and uh, yeah. you just kind of roll up. Um, that's, all, that's how it started. And, and that's how, most people start playing uh, it's just kind of showing up with their friends and then jumping on with different people and whatever so the loyalty is very important um and you know it is a small group um small sport and you know you don't never want to burn bridges which is why you know you, you leave gracefully but yeah you, you always should do what's right for you how many years were you with infamous three years three years it seems like longer doesn't it? Yeah, it, it did it seem does. like uh, yeah, longer. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but you were but with Thunder amazing. before that. Yeah, Thunder for two years before that. Yeah, what? Which decision was harder, uh, leaving Thunder to go to Infamous or Infamous to go to Dynasty? Um, because that was your first pro team, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was more difficult to leave Thunder. Uh, to leave Infamous. Um, so this time around. You know, mm-hmm. another year under our belt, um, we had 
two years ago, we had a, a very, very good year. We, you know, we took second for, for the season behind dynasty. Um, we, we were, you know, very close, um, for that being us, basically. I think it came down, yeah. it came down at one point on Sunday at world cup. Uh, and that, you know, the season would have been ours instead of, instead of dynasty. Um, Damn. and that, you know, that was the best season of paintball I've ever had thus far. Um, you know, mm -hmm. standing wise. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, then just, uh, what do you, just the, the relationship we've, we built too. I mean, so on Thunder too, it was, it was only X ball, you know, on, on infamous, we played 10 man in, in X ball and you really cannot, um, you know, look down upon, or you can't negate 10 man. And, uh, and I think like every team that should go take their full team and go play 10 man, it builds so much cohesion and like, you know, extra time with the boys, you know, it's, it's a little more relaxed environment. You know, you maybe have like mm -hmm. a beer or two at night. It's more, it's more family oriented. So you're building way more, more bonds uh, than, mm -hmm. than you are like, you know, at the NXL, it's, it's way more serious and, and structured. Um, you're absolutely and, right about that. If, yeah. if teams did play more 10 man tournaments together, not only are you playing more paintball together, but that camaraderie is through the roof. I mean, the 10 man paintball format is one of the, most fun things you'll ever do don't get me wrong i love playing the fast paced x ball but it's just a different cadence and like we said it's all love for all paintball um any time that you can have a paintball gun in your hand running around building that camaraderie with your teammates it's gonna show when you go to perform on the main stage as well you're building that confidence that connection you have to communicate in an entirely new way right. that that transfers onto the x ball field tremendously in these large fields, you really have to broadcast and come up with systems for connecting the field. And that mm -hmm. kind of stuff transfers right over into the X ball format. So if anybody's thinking about it, definitely, you know, more paintball that you play together, like you said, it's going to really help. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we, we brought so many 10 man calls over to X ball and vice versa. Um, and in the end, uh, the last, last year I was creating all the, um, the layout calls and, and everything for the team. Um, and yeah. we were, I was using everything for 10 man, um, and I, I just did the ten, the ten man layouts for uh, the last event too, and it was basically our X ball layout plus plus a few extra bunkers. I mean, it's, um, it's imperative. If you don't have good codes for your team, you are not going to be able to compete with the teams that do. Because absolutely. at the end of the day, it's all about being the most efficient. The most efficient teams are the ones that win. They process mm -hmm. information quicker. They get to resolve problems quicker. And they have a better scope of awareness on what's going on with these codes. Instead of having to say a whole slew of words, you're just saying this one thing that means a whole bunch, right? And mm -hmm. I actually, out in Palm Bay, um, with the squad that I was training with, Lost Cause, you know, that was a big talking point when I was working with them is um, we have to get codes on point. And everybody needs a sheet of paper with the codes and needs to know these. And that's going to be your homework you know, aside from doing the drills, aside from putting in that extra work, we need to know these codes because it's going to transfer onto that field and it's going to help you win tournaments straight up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I want to suggest this one, Marcel. The uh, the second event, uh, the first weekend, which is not a layout weekend, there's a tournament in uh, Mexico, a 10-man tournament that uh, would be a great team practice. And not just oh. for Dynasty, but any team listening <laughs> – uh, you know, if there's budget for, for a second team practice, that's a really good one. Now he's managing practices. I'm no, I'm putting a suggestion in the box. <laughs> managing <laughs> practices. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and and nip that in the butt immediately. <laughs> Two weekends before the event, we will uh, we will 100 percent be practicing X ball, the format that we're gonna be playing. Um, After this so, long conversation yeah, that Tyler yeah. and I just had about how important it is. <laughs> Yeah, we've been there, done that. You know, it is important. It definitely is. Um, I, I do agree with that, but I don't think it's more important than having an actual practice that in the weekends leading up to uh, the event. If it's something that you know, kind of like middle of the season, kind of like the ICC Dynasty, I don't know, played, Marsh. Did quite a few of those. I don't know, bud. I if think you can that play you a tournament, definitely be playing. Oh, oh. You know, <laughs> down Tyler. there. If you can play a full tournament with 10 guys, all 10 Dude, at guys first, Tyler, team. I was like, really? <laughs> oh, Tyler's like, yeah, uh, please waste that practice. <laughs> go down to Mexico. Rip it. <laughs> Rip it. Team bonding. Oh, man. Ooh, come, on. Uh, come on. Come on. 
<laughs> you you had mentioned something about um you know the team being one point away from winning the series you know and it, and it kind of came down to our match at world cup so infamous had a stellar year that year and then ended last year in last place at world cup um what do you think contributed to the disparity in performance from not just infamous, but, but yourself as well. Um, I think it is safe to say that your, your best season to date was 2021. You played phenomenal, truly had a, a stellar year. And then last year, it wasn't, wasn't quite as stellar. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think were the, were the factors for that, both for the team and yourself? Yeah. I mean, like, so from 21 to 22, we only had one major roster uh, loss, which was Greg Sewers. And that was obviously yeah. Greg's an amazing player. Um, and, and actually, last year, looking back on it, I was I was watching some footage from Cup and just like was watching him play and just how like he was talking to both sides and doing like ten different jobs. I'm not putting it all on him, but uh, you know when you have Magic with five guys or or six guys, yeah, seven guys, yeah, whatever, yeah. Um, losing him is huge. And and then uh, yeah, I guess you know we had we had a powwow mid year. Cody uh, Cody was the team captain. He he called everyone. He's like, hey this is not acceptable. Like everyone's got to get back, go back to the gym, whatever you're doing, this is wrong. So we all talked about it and, you know, find that motivation in ourselves. Um, I, I, but I don't really have, there's not like one thing, you know, was like, you know, we changed something that, that like, you know, was a, was a big changer that those are the, that's the thing. I mean, Greg was, was a big, big part of it, but it doesn't mean, that's not second place to last place. Uh, should not yeah, be certainly. that. In that case. You know, he certainly. wasn't shooting four guys a game. Um, Sometimes he was, though, and he won a lot of down body situations. Greg, yeah. Greg, I thought um, when, when he retired, I, I thought it was going to hurt the team a lot more than I think a lot of people did because mm-hmm. he also had, I think, one of his best seasons to date in that 2021 season. I mean, he played really stellar, yeah. really lights out. He really did. Greg was, was absolutely on fire. Um, mm-hmm. but you are right. One player shouldn't create that disparity. Um, sometimes things just don't go your way. Sometimes you get out of a groove and, uh, it could just take one tournament to kind of get knocked out of a groove and, and it could be hard to find that groove again. Um, you know, so that could kind of yeah. be it too, you know, really. Um, what about and yourself honest, personally? Like we, 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 we did have two like you know, tournaments that we were, that we felt that we were, you know, capable of winning. Uh, the first Dallas event, we took, I don't mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. third or fourth place or whatever, fourth place. Yeah, that's uh, right. You guys beat us that event handed, too. Handed Dynasty their only mercy rule, I think, in the past mm-hmm. <laughs> however many years. Um, yeah, yeah, certainly. And ended up losing to Damage who, who in overtime who won the event. So whatever, whatever, that, mm-hmm. that's very close. And then we had True. Chicago, which we were – we got into first or second round of Sunday, um, lost to Russians who ended up getting second place. In the finals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think, I think, I think too, like, yeah, it is easy to get, to get knocked out of the group for sure. Uh, and then yeah, but like, you guys are in the dance confidence. there. Yeah. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, even, even our, our, you know, two years ago, our, our great year, we took second, the first event and then the next event, um, we made Sunday, but like kind of barely squeaked in, made the first round, I think got knocked out the second round uh, by, by impact, if I'm correct. And that was like a big, you know, wind out of our sails kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, it took, took like extra effort to, to get back into that groove. So I think uh, what you're saying is, is correct. Like looking at the macro, you can see like the, mm-hmm. if you're in momentum and you, and you can stay in momentum, that's, that's a huge, yeah. Uh, Mm-hmm. Huge component of winning. Absolutely. Um, and then myself personally, um, last year was a super busy year. I started a company um, in in January. We we uh, started pitching investors in March, and we raised um, a lot of money by the end of September. So it was like uh, a very big year professionally for myself, um, and and uh, that did cut into some practice time and some gym time, of course. Um, but I, you know, I was also working the year before. Um, and I think I, I think I, uh, there's, a, I don't, there's always like, I've, I've been working my, my whole career and, um, 
this year was that last year was particularly busy, but um, it can be tough, you know, like <laughs> focus, you know, if it, if it gets pulled into different directions, um, it, it can make it hard to uh, stay consistent, you know, and, and compete at the highest level. I know for myself, it's like so important to be able to completely tap in, in the weeks leading up to an event and try to put everything else on, on the, on the side. So like try to do our best to take care of whatever you need to get taken care of. Um, and fortunately, pretty much everything I do revolves around paintball. So I could be in control of that. But, you know, if you are, are involved in business outside of paintball and you don't have that control, it could definitely be difficult to keep focused and focus is like the most important thing in all sports period, you know? So hopefully, Absolutely. hopefully we won't have those issues this year, but I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm super motivated, super, super focused. Yeah. I'm actually on uh, day five of, uh, the February project. So yeah, we saw that. that. That freaking tin can doesn't stand a damn chance. I've seen that. Dude. That tin can doesn't stand a chance. You think you got accuracy? Try hitting a tin can moving. Bro, I'm telling you. Yeah, I How love many it. cans have you been through now? And I and I eat my beans, too. Yeah, beaned up. How many <laughs> hey, beaning the shit out of that can? How many you, cans have you been through? I, when you can How many cans it, have you been through? A, a lot. Yeah. A lot. No, seriously, I, I, I usually hang them from a rope, but I had to stop doing that because I would start breaking them. Cause yeah. I, I shoot them so many times. I'm not like it happens. I've broken a lot of cans, poke them so, on them and, and wrap them. It's, I mean, so what do you do? You can be, now it's know, on like a, it's on like a uh, pull, like a, oh yeah. Uh, like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Anytime you know, that you can be uh, shooting your paintball gun, that's what you need to be doing. And in regards to, you know, focus and determination, man, there's nobody in the league. I, I would put Marcelo up against just about anybody in regards to, uh, focus and determination and applying himself before a tournament the guy is freaking locked in you know in every regard that you can be locked in the guy is locked in and it is contagious you know you got to have that kind of stuff in an organization um and i know you know if marcelo is not on dynasty it's a completely different team because the guy brings a certain energy to a program that you i mean it's it's hard to find. It really is hard to find. And he's honed that in over, oh, over a lifetime, you know? Um, so, I mean, I guess the best bit of advice I would give you, Harry, is just that guy right there, you know? Uh, be be uh, working with Marcelo and, and uh, the guy is going to keep you focused, you know what I mean? Um, but it's, it's something that takes a tremendous amount of effort and it's not easy. It sucks, actually. It's, and it, it, does to the normal people not for us because we love it but you, you know say, like you, you're crazy it is, it's fun <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's super fun for for like crazy people like us but for if you're not used to that rhythm if you're not used to that style it can be a lot because um if you're going to be the best like we talked about prior you have to have the most information you have to understand what's going on and really understand it not not half-ass understand it and like kind of understand it. You got to really know. And when you know, and you can share that information with the people around you, it is, it is infectious and it's contagious. And also it raises the level of play of everyone around you as well. Mm. You know, so having, uh, having that in the program is going to be huge and it's going to be fun to watch you grow as a player too, man. You know, this is a, a really powerful organization to be a part of. It's one of the best teams in the world over the last 20 years and the number one team in the world right now, um, even through all of uh, the iterations of paintball through everything, they've stood the test of time and you're going to be able to pick a lot of people's brains that know how to win. How many, um, I know you've been in the finals. Have you've won an NXL tournament? Am I right? Yeah. Nope, no. Not okay. So that's a, that's a skill set, right? Yeah. Learning to win is a skill set. It's something that takes a lot of effort and a lot of trial and, and more error. You know, you lose a lot more than you win. Um, mm -hmm. So being able to just ask really good questions, you know, we talk about this all the time, asking good questions. You ask those good questions, you get good answers. And, you know, you got a, you got a solid crew of people around you that'll help you get those um, questions answered. What are you most excited about playing with Dynasty? And what are you looking to bring to the program um, in regards to your play style and just as a teammate for 2023? Uh, I'm most excited to, to come on and make a beat, like 
prove to my to prove to everybody that I'm I am who I who I came on to be and uh, mm-hmm. that I'm that I'm worthy of a of a spot and a starting spot. So I want to I want to come on immediately earn that. And that like that challenge is very motivating motivating to me and like as a competitor and as a as a person. Um, so I'm that's like very exciting to me. Yeah, uh, you and, just got to be a bully straight up. Just be a bully. Yeah, be mean. No, really, don't do yeah, that. I, do not do that. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not like making that actually cool, big deal. Social media, like that, that cool, like whatever. I, that's, I'm not content at all. Like I'm only content when I'm, you know, winning tournaments and being a big impact on on the team. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was actually just talking to my wife about that. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I'm. This is cool, but like, it doesn't really. Yeah. Obviously, I'm very happy and very excited to be on Dynasty, but it's the work's just getting started. Yeah, yeah it's the work just started. Yeah. Like literally, I'm as I said, I'm on a 30 day. Um, you know, I call it the the February project. Um, in years past, I used to do it in January, and it was called the January project, but I changed it. February works a lot better for schedule wise. Um, so it's 30 days of just paintball, focus, meditation, gym every day. I'm I'm with off the leash with Patty Gleason. Um, of leash lifestyle so he's got a crazy really good program really good for um paintball in general or any sports totally um, speed and, and athletic and agility um so i'm on his program um you know i'm eating my avocados every day there it there is you go. <laughs> youtube check it out my kids real food you know it is nice there it is. There yeah that was actually one of the questions from the discord from cyrus uh he they wanted to know what you do, if anything, to keep your mobility so good, which is definitely one of your your traits. Um, you and Tyler, tall tall dudes that can get down, <laughs> fold it, bend down like Gumby into any position possible on the paintball field, which is a huge advantage. Yeah, I I mean at this point it's like it's kind of just natural to me. I'm I'm like always kind of stretching or doing something. Like if I'm like sitting on a couch or something, I'm kind of I'm in a chair right now. But if I'm like sitting on the couch. I like, I got my leg up or I'm, I'm doing something weird. You know, like people look at me nice. like, what are you doing nice. right now? I'm like, I'm just, I'm just being me, you know, in my body. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done a lot of yoga throughout the years. I, I think uh, yoga has a lot that like, can have a really good impact on people that um, may not really know their body very well. Um, I don't go to yoga as much anymore because it's, it's not really like an ath- athletic activity. Um, it is a re- like a really good, Again, if, if you don't know your body or if you're if you're need to explore your body and its limits, um, it's very good. But it doesn't so well coordinate with with athletic training. Um, but anyone that hasn't done it should definitely do it for a while. Um, and how do I say nimble? And then just yeah, training off leash training is is really awesome. Patty Patty Gleason does a really good job. Um, Greg Sewers also has a really good program. You should check out both of those. Compare both of them. See which one you you know, resonates with you better on uh, don't get into like big bulking sessions and stuff like that. Um, or there's time for that, but uh, don't follow any of those guys on, on social media or anything. <laughs> so big, yeah, big yeah, I mean, paintball, essentially you want to be, you don't want to be a large target. It makes it just more surface area. So if you have huge arms, you know, shout out to the, to the bulking, you know, because <sighs> The bulking game is serious business yeah. and it is going to help you off the field. You know what I'm saying? Swolled up. And, uh, but it's, it's definitely a balance. You want to make sure that you are limber and in athletic shape. You got to make sure that you do have, you know, muscle tone to carry you through an entire tournament. So you can't not mm-hmm. be lifting weights as well. And, Patty, everything that he's doing is really amazing. Everybody go check out off the leash lifestyle.com and, uh, and check out what he's been doing over there. I've been working with Patty a little bit here and it's tremendous. The program he has running. Um, it's, you know, it's a constant effort. You gotta be always evolving, working, um, staying in the gym, doing all the little details that we talk about to make sure you can be the best player when you step out there on that field. And eating clean is really important too. It's yeah. like, I mean, there, there's got to put I've good got, fuel. Yeah, it start and it starts from the uh, starts in the grocery store. Make good choices there. Um, read the label. Read the label. <laughs> read the questions. label. Ask, yeah. It's so simple. Just take it, like don't go to the grocery store and 
go through the motions, like take very like take an extra hour or whatever, and everything you put in your basket, read the full label. It's like it's the simplest and most. And and yeah, you're gonna like I eat ice cream. I love ice cream. I love eating. I love junk food. Cookies. Oh yeah, love it. Chocolate. Oh yeah. <laughs> but you got like that. You have to know like this is junk food. Like this is time mm -hmm. to eat junk food. Yes. I'm doing this for myself well, because I like it. So we're talking about Obviously, the pro, the yeah. pro level. Obviously, at the pro level, you got to be doing everything that you possibly can to to bring the best product onto that field. You know, if you're just playing paintball for, for fun, it really doesn't matter because like we talked about earlier, paintball is one of those special games where you can just go out there and, and you know, play and enjoy the game if that's what you want. If you're not looking to, to you know, climb the ranks and do that whole, that whole thing, that's yeah. okay too, you know? Um, that's one of the cool things about sports in general and paintball is uh, you can just play and have fun and, and that is just as valid as someone who wants to, be the best paintball player in the world, you know? Yeah. And there's a place for all that. Like you can go yeah. to the, the beer. There's, there's definitely leagues in, you know, locally that you can mm -hmm. that 10 yep. man. There's, there's so you go play in the woods, do scenarios. Scenarios are awesome. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what it's really all about. Um, we got Nick Gallimore from PTG nation discord. Harrison, what's the craziest thing you have ever done? In ever, in ball or just yeah. ever, ever, just like it sounds ever like just done. ever. <laughs> oh, like in the last month or just or ever. I mean, because I was just I just spent two months uh traveling Sri Lanka. Oh, we heard Bali. about the volcano. You were on yeah. here. You broke that news with us. Volcano. That was insane. I yeah. was not on. No, about, Joe. Yeah. That was Joe, JB. Joe. Oh, yeah. but he was talking about you. You yes, guys were we, out there rocking together. I'll tell that story. So yeah, Joey B and I we played Mexico event. Uh, shout out to Rangers, uh, Matamoros Rangers. We won the, the season. Um, Let's go ooh, Rangers. Joe, yeah. And then we, Joe and I flew to Guatemala, Antigua, Guatemala City, then took a, uh, like a $2 hour long taxi ride to, to Antigua. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> stayed there. Uh, and then, and then woke up at like five in the morning and, and hiked this volcano. Um, it was like a four hour straight vertical hike got to like the, you know, got to top and then you had to like go in this valley. Anyways, we were like, I don't know. It was 600 feet. I think. Does that make sense? It was 600 meters. No, something. It was, it was a few football fields away. This active volcano exploding right in front of us. Go on my Instagram. You see an awesome, an awesome picture of it, a uh, video of it. Like that's right in front of us. This volcano exploding. It was, it was insane. That seems so crazy. That that honestly seemed insane. Those those uh, videos cool. and the photos is like mind blowing to me. Mind blowing, dangerous yeah. too. And now it just seems like whatever at this point because I did it. And it's like where's the next? Where's the next one? Yeah. Like <laughs> I mean that <laughs> that is a. He's got a like picture I, on the uh, the YouTube for everybody. The thing. volcano is just going off. Oh damn! Look at that thing. That's insane. Yeah, that is not, not too far from that. Wow, dude. Yeah, I mean, so for like, YouTube, we got Magma. You, and we're, so we're, we're on this that, ridge. Gonna be some, yeah. We're on this ridge that's connecting these. And we, we hiked one volcano, the not unactive one, to get to this active one. And we're on this ridge that like connects the two. And the wind is howling. It's it's cold. We're like however many thousand feet up. And we're like huddled. Like me and Joe are like literally cuddling each other. Like, so cool. <laughs> and like watching this volcano <laughs> erupt and... Oh, it was so cool. And then we went back to uh, like base camp and, you know, we're at, at fire and, and we can still see the volcano. So we're having dinner, which is like, you know, ramen noodles, it's whatever. And uh, the volcano is still erupting. Me and him brought like a, a big box of wine, actually. And we we're drinking wine nice. on top of the thing. Like, woo. <laughs> and sounds uh, like an adventure. Why don't we do a continent hop? OK, that was uh, South America, right? So let's okay. uh, let's go to Europe. What's the craziest thing you've ever done in Europe? Um, I hitchhiked from Budapest to Krakow, uh, one summer with this dude I met. Literally, I, I walked downstairs. I was in a hostel. I had just gone to Siget, which was this crazy music festival. Um, this and is a I burner. walked downstairs and I'm like, I want to get out of here. And this dude's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to hitchhike to, uh, to Krakow. I'm like, I'm coming with you. He's like, let's go. <laughs> so I grab my backpack <laughs> That's, a Blake. That's a Blake story right there. Yeah. So then like. 
we slept on a bench that night in like in Slovakia somewhere. Uh, like actually the, another, like we, I'm like, all right, well, I think we're stuck here. So I went to the store and I like bought a bottle of this, like random, whatever alcohol vodka thing. I'm like, this is how we're getting through the night. <laughs> this will keep us warm. <laughs> slept on nice. a bench. Ended up in Krakow, like, you know, 48 hours later, like, took a bunch of buses and hitchhiked, and that was Europe. That's okay, the journey, week. man, and you and Blake are going to have some conversations. Holy smokes. Oh, I so Blake and I played uh, Mexico for, like, five years together on the same team, yeah. so we've shared a lot Dude, of stories. That's perfect. Um, he's, he's Dude, wanna, what about the biker gang? Person. We haven't gotten to Asia yet. Yep, we we're okay. heading right over there. All right, all right. All right. What happened so with that? We've had some fry cell <clears throat> ventures in uh, in some Asia. Fry cell ventures. <laughs> uh, trying to find a, I'm trying to find a photo. Oh, I think I got. Yeah. So what was up with this biker gang that you guys had? What's going on? <laughs> so there's this. <laughs> so Phuket, Thailand is it is literally the the Las Vegas of Thailand, and Thailand is already every sin you want to have, you can have it place. So it's already sin country, and now this is sin city in sin country it's the las vegas of asia it's it's insane um <laughs> off the charts no sorry not Phuket. pataya sorry pataya, pataya yeah pataya yeah 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 and so so we we wake up marcel and i you know spend and a few other guys this is after the tournament we wake up the next morning after after going out all night and there's this island um colipe mm -hmm. or Kolarn. no sorry Kolarn is the name uh and we we get our buddy chris um, who's just completely hungover. He's he's one of those guys that just cannot like doesn't function the next day. After he's drinking. like a he's small like, small British dude that uh, yeah. lives in Lost Australia. Every on, water. Yeah. <laughs> like short, oh, I love Chris. Fair skinned, like he's fast as hell though. Super athletic. <laughs> he, he won that lottery. <laughs> and, yeah, he uh, won that lottery. So there's this this beautiful island, Kolarn, and it's got seven um beautiful beaches and they're all different um so we got on the island we rented motos and we spent the day beach hopping to every to all the seven different beaches and uh you know just spent the day basically in in our shorts and riding around this on the on the this beautiful island doesn't have any cars it's just like only uh maybe there's a few cars but only motos you know really cool day um that was that was a great day. I don't think it was the craziest thing I've done in Asia, but uh, yeah. Well, those great. are all Definitely like not. we talked about earlier. We had a yeah, we had Erin Scott on the show, and uh, she is the co-owner of Northern Lights, the new WNXL team. We're talking about like mm -hmm. different types of gifts of the game, right? Uh, this game mm -hmm. gives you so many different gifts, and Absolutely. what we're talking about now is exactly hitting on that. So you get to travel and see the world, and play paintball, be around great people, have fun. And it's just something that you don't get in any other facet of life, you know? So being able to uh, to have those experiences, they're timeless and you'll carry them with you for your whole entire life, which is something that, you know, you'll forever be grateful for. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Ah, I found it. Biker He's gang, hunting, baby. Dude. There it is. Biker Check gang. Out YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Chris, Chris on, right there. The right. Yep. Me in the middle and fry dog right there, dude. I mean, just like that photo alone, you can see this is like what we were cruising around. This island was so amazing. Literally, yeah. you would go from beach to beach. No cars, like Harry said. Gorgeous. Just everything was amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I miss Asia so much, dude. I cannot wait to get back there for some paintball. I was still semi-pro then. Hmm. Bro, you're still semi-pro. <laughs> you're semi-pro you. until our first Jokes event. Jokes on you. You just picked up a semi-pro, kid. <laughs> Dude, we're uh, it's charity work. We figured Dynasty would like made a good amount of money. We have to uh, have some charitable contributions this year. All right, I'm coming at you. <laughs> First practice. I Better watch it, out. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Fry Dog. Obviously, we uh, we're very excited to have you for for reasons, uh, um, you know, that you uh, put together yourself. You know, in the last couple seasons, you've really taken taken a big step in your playing career. So excited to utilize those skills and. And um, who knows, man, we just might win together. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that we were going to eventually be teammates one day? From God, you weaseled your way onto my Australian team over in Australia. 
and and now you've weaseled your way onto Dynasty with me. What the hell is happening? You know, I, I know where it's. All right, it Harry. Before <laughs> uh, before we let you go, we're gonna hop into some Discord questions. We yes. got quite a few of them in there here. Everyone's really excited to ask some questions. And uh, they're excited to watch you play for Dynasty, man. It's some big news. And it's been a crazy offseason. I mean, this has, bar none, been the wildest offseason I have ever seen in my 20-plus years playing pro. I've really? never seen a shakeup quite like this at the top ranks of the league quite the way that that uh, this season has done. It's been pretty tremendous, and it hasn't stopped. We're still – we had five different people – go to different teams just this last week and that is you know just adding to what we've had over the last few weeks um, but mm -hmm. i'll start off with let's see we'll go with papa sash shout out to papa sash he's out in texas harrison are you aware that the nxl ref training <laughs> you are shown oh, as Jesus. an example of a player moving uh, and concealing valid hits when sliding or dragging no. your gun on the ground <laughs> no <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> What's the evidence? <laughs> you said no. Oh, Bubba. I've never heard um, that. I've I've never heard that. No. Papa Sash no, has, and, has a few questions that he uh he's getting anything around, that's but, yeah, <laughs> Papa Sash is having fun in here. Um Warnock also was wondering, uh, he heard you're an extremely picky grocery shopper. And you know, I think yes. that the labels we kind of hit on that. You gotta read your labels, right? And that's why I read Kate's real food labels. And they're there all we go. Good ingredients. And then nice. avocados, you don't even need a label. You know what I mean? There's no label. It's just an <laughs> avocado. It's so simple. There's no label. <laughs> from Mexico. Uh, boom. No label. Um, all right. From Bortega0073. Fry, what part of the field do you see yourself contributing to the Dynasty crew? Uh, yeah, so I, I got asked this question a few times. And, and like, actually, I got asked this question during a Lone Wolf interview um, a few days ago. And it was actually a little different. It was, what have you uh, learned on the most on, on Infamous? And it was like that uh, Travis and I like worked a lot together. And it was basically uh, anywhere I can get to the quickest, the 50 that I get to the quickest and attack the, the hardest, then that's where I need to be. Um, so that's the answer. Anywhere. Uh, and I really learned that about myself. Like I'm not a back guy, supporting guy. Like. I just want to go and and get in your face, basically, get in the other Cause team's face. Mayhem. Yeah, mm. and hopefully I'm alive by the end of it. Um, and a lot of times I am, but you know, not always. Um, well, honestly, as as that mayhem kind of person, it's not really your job to be alive. You yeah, know? that's fine. Um, if you but can, those are the best players in the league. That's right. If you can, mm -hmm. then you're going to be at the top the of the top. Best attackers. Yeah. yeah. Best attackers in the league. Totally, because yeah. they go no, I, cause I, I they and stay alive. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I do that. Uh, that's kind of one of my specialties. It sometimes it bites me, but like I'll squeeze out a shot and, and always try to escape uh, rather than just like you know trade with the guy and like guarantee the shot. So sometimes I miss him and and I get mm. shot because I'm trying to escape. But oh, we know, we know, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> we know the play style. What we know how that? it's going what down out there. Yeah. All right, uh, hard to dig out. So the answer Dude, is uh, the termite. Attacking. The answer is attacking in any capacity, uh, in any location. I don't care if it's snake or Doritos or centers or in the back, which you can't attack from the back, but uh, whatever. Can. Anywhere, anywhere in the other team's face. That's where we go. We got. Uh, Hell yeah, dude. Baller. I can't wait to see that. Old baller 85. Fry, love watching. Uh, you do your thing, sir. With all the shakeups this offseason, do you think the pro bracket will stay the way it has been, or do you think we'll see some new teams take a win or two this year? I mean, my money's on Dynasty all year. Um, but, hey, you never know. It's it's sports, really. Like Where the smart money goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, really. That's that's the best thing about, about anything in sports, Like, and that's why I love all sports, and, and I – you know, you have to have empathy to, to everything if you're if you've been playing any sport long enough that any given Sunday it's it's a real saying for a reason. Um, obviously, there's statistics and there's better teams, um, but but anything can happen. So, but yeah, my money my money is definitely with Dynasty. 
What's your take on uh, the diesel shakeup? That's pretty big news. What do you think about yeah, all that? I, I think that's great. Um, everyone there is, you know, wants to be there. And uh, I, I talked to Mark this past weekend. Uh, he's really excited. So congrats to all them that, that you know, they made the move. And Absolutely. I, I think it's great for Texas paintball and, and paintball fits a great field. The owners are awesome people. Um, it's one of the best parks in the in. I mean, I put fantastic. it up. Yeah in the, not just the nation but in the world it's one of the best parks there is yeah i agree <clears throat> they got yeah, the lights GD, uh, runs a tight ship yeah it's awesome but the, but the best grass in the world is in guadalajara mexico at arturo's field Oof. i've said this before is, and I'll say yeah. again, it is the best grass i've ever played on in the world that's gotta that be brutal for Artie leaving that you know, yeah, it's kind of skinny. <laughs> and then he comes and yeah, practices in the U.S. and he's like, "What are you guys doing, dude? Like, we, <laughs> we got the business down here. I'm excited uh, to head down there and, and play the first event, Harry. Obviously, like, you'll be down it's there. It's like too. a sponge with with dude, it's, amazing turf grass oh, on it. It's it's yeah. so nice. It is yeah. so nice. Yeah, props to Artie for for what he does to keep that uh, as the premier field in Mexico. He's done a fantastic job just with the league um, in general, you know, offering such a great um, uh, place for people to compete down there. You know, it's it feels like you're at a, you know, a, a miniature NXL event. So he does a fantastic job. Yeah, I've been going down there. This might be my seventh year. I got to count six or seven. Nice. Years. Nice. Yeah, I was super late to, to playing paintball in Mexico. Uh, I don't know why it just never seemed cool to me. I just, I never really cared to do it. It was like, you know, we were busy going all over the world and it was like, I haven't really gone to Mexico that much for paintball. Um, yeah. And I went for the first time. Uh, I don't know when that was two seasons ago, I think. Um, and I was like, damn, Arturo has a fantastic league down here. I did not realize how nice this was, you know? Um, so hopefully get to go a little bit more. I, I should be playing the first event and the last event this year. Cool. Yeah. The It'll NXL all, is yeah. amazing spectacular league yeah. Artie's been crushing it with that totally gotta get you down ty yeah i i know Artie's. uh it's i've been invited from phoenix yep it's not too far it's just you know i got a got a whole family to look after mm -hmm. uh kids and a wife it's a, it's a lot <laughs> ty don't love to travel <laughs> well, <laughs> you I can do. keep it 100 <laughs> yeah yeah i i really enjoy playing uh locally you know, play play yeah, here, yeah. and then when I can, I've made my trips uh, all over the place to Canada, Europe, um, South America. But as of uh, you know, the last few years, having a, a wife and kids and making sure that they're all good on the home front totally. is my number one priority. Yeah, it's a different where, adventure. Yeah, where where's your favorite place you've played paintball at, Ty? I don't I don't know. If, Shoot, I, I mean, I know. I think it would have to be Prague, dude. That, okay, that I agree. Right. Takes that event cake. was. Yeah, that was dope. Also, yeah. where play the game was yep. conceptualized. That's right, 2018, oh, okay. baby. Yeah, is uh, is one of my favorite tournaments of all time, and that I had no clue how badass Prague was. Like prior to going out there, I was Prague's blown awesome. away. <laughs> it's insane. It yeah, is. That place is epic. It's amazing. Yeah, awesome, dude. Fry dog. I can't wait to see you at practice. Uh, very excited to get the season going. Welcome to the team. Um, you know, I've already had had my phone call with you, so obviously you know how I feel about everything and how excited I am to uh, get playing with you. But um, thank you for coming on the show as well. Heard you were on Spick and Span a little bit earlier. Hope that, uh, you know, went well, went smooth, and you got out of there without a headache. But, uh, <laughs> but, wait, wait, but he didn't ask me. He didn't ask me anything like, you know, interesting. You guys, you guys were uh, definitely. No. There we go. Poking, uh, poking the we, buttons, yeah. Asking we, more. We got to dig, dude. We got to dig. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we're not doing our job. You know, it's for the listeners. I agree. It's for the listeners. Yeah. yeah. Ask congrats, the dude. Congrats on uh, on everything. And we can't wait to see you soon. We'll see you in Florida in, in just a few weeks out here. Yes, sir. And then uh, be sure to plug your socials. Let yes. people know if you have any projects you're working on, uh, anything that we can support you with as well. Um, drop yeah, that for everybody. Picture right now. Put it on the, put it on the Boom. Ground. What do we uh, got? Oh, I'm you're boosting. Kidding. You're boosting us on the socials. I love that. <laughs> boosting myself. There we too. go. Uh, Harrison yeah. Fry Ventures. Harrison Fry Ventures. Yeah. So I, a lot of people go on Ed Ventures. I go on Fry Ventures. Um, Boom. And you guys, you know, you can go on Fry Ventures too with me. Marcelo's been on some. 
Tyler, we've been on some fry ventures, you know. Yes, sir. Down here in Boston and stuff. Heck yeah. Um, yeah. So that's and what that's, it that's on uh, YouTube, right? You have you do some videos that you upload. Uh, on there? I do. I do a lot of Instagram. I'm gonna start some YouTube shorts this year. I'm actually working with uh, with a social media manager, at Banana Digital. He's a really cool guy. Um, nice. Oh, can check him out. Um, Tight. And he's gonna he's gonna help me with a lot of my content too, because I just I don't have time for all of it. I I run a business too. Um, and he's he's just better at it. Um, well, let us know how we can support you, dude, and uh, yeah. and plug that. I don't know if you have a, a plug for that, but everybody follow Harrison Instagram. Fry on Fry, Instagram. Harrison Fry on Instagram. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the easiest one. Um, and then from there you can get to YouTube and everything else. I, I had a YouTube for a while. Um, kind of fills it out. Um, it's tough to really keep up with. You have, to be, yeah, you have to be on it. Like YouTube's a, yeah. it's obviously a a good a good end game, but it takes years. I, props to Ronnie for what he's doing. Like he's that yeah. is a war of attrition. Like, and I, I think he's really built a great thing for himself. And you guys too. Like, I mean, what you guys are doing too is is Thanks, takes a lot of time and a lot of time and effort. Thank so you, I totally respect it, and and that's a it's a lot. Um, and yeah, and I think it's I hope it's rewarding for you guys. I think it is. It seems like you guys have a huge following one discord must be pretty popping and how many it people are <laughs> you got to um, keep having fun that's the key to it all um, yeah you know no matter what you do if you enjoy it and you have fun with it it'll be a good process and you'll have good quality results and uh, everybody be sure to follow fry on his fry ventures and we'll see everyone soon for episode number 179 all right brother Ooh, Peace. 179 thank you fry Peace dog later brother all right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the Patreon link and become a supporter. If you do support the show at any level, you'll get access to the Discord. You don't want to miss out on what's going on in the Discord. It's epic. It's amazing. It's the best. The best community in paintball. Become a GOAT. Get access to the monthly meetings. Tyler and myself, we do a meeting every single month with these amazing giveaways, tons of knowledge dropped, and really just all around a good time. All right, everybody, as always, we will see you very soon.